What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonas. This is episode 96, so we're rapidly approaching the magical 100th episode. That'll be in the next couple of weeks. But this is episode 96, and I've got a special guest uh, that I'll be introducing very, very soon. Uh, this episode is quite an important episode. It's going to be covering quite a few important topics, especially if you're a WWE or an NXT fan. We're going to be looking at the Royal Rumble, which takes place in a couple of days' time, and uh, we're going to be covering Worlds Collide as well. In between all of that, we're going to be looking at this week's NXT on the USA Network and AEW Dynamite, uh, which was on the, uh, the Norwegian Pearl out in the Bahamas. Lucky people if you're on that ship. Um, I know one or two people that were, and we'll talk about that a bit later on. But uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Just one plug I want to throw out there before I, I introduce my special guest today, and that's to go and visit our website, wrestlingwithjohners.com, where you can find links to all of our social media pages, uh, our full archive of podcasts, interviews, vlogs, articles from our team of writers, daily news updates on this wonderful world of professional wrestling, and so much more. So go and check it out. That's wrestlingwithjohners.com. It's uh, wrestling with John is all in one place. Uh, and now that leads me brilliantly to introduce my special guest for this episode of Wrestling with Johnners. And I want to introduce uh, Rob from the Bob Culture podcast. So, Rob, uh, good evening where you are. It's, it's kind of early hours of the morning over here in the UK, but uh, good evening uh, where you are in, in the States. Uh, how are you, Rob? I'm great, man. And thank you, Jonas, for having me on the show. I'm a big fan of your show. Uh, your website's also fantastic. You, you guys do a great job uh, as far as your coverage, especially with the match coverage. I listened to recently your um, UK NXT Blackpool review. That was yeah. fantastic. You guys are calling all the spots. It's a great show. So I, I'm honored to be here uh, featured on your show, man. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I've become a bit of a fan of yours. I've caught up with uh, quite a few of your podcasts, but uh, thank you for agreeing to be a guest on on this very important episode. So we've got a lot to cover then, Rob. Uh, but Absolutely. before we do, um, one thing I'd like to do when we have a new guest on that we haven't had before is to get a little bit, uh, get to know uh, a bit more about our guest and to get a bit to know a bit more about you then, Rob. Uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, your podcast. I mentioned earlier it was the, the Bob Culture podcast podcast uh so uh, how long have you been podcasting for how did you come up with a name for your podcast and and kind of tell us about some of the features and some of the cool stuff that you're doing on your podcast currently uh well thank you so much man uh, basically yeah the bob culture podcast it's been a pop culture show that kind of evolved into a, a very wrestle heavy show but we do a lot of pop culture stuff film reviews as well um, it's been great experience, you know, connecting with a lot of great podcasters like yourself, uh, the Queen of NE, uh, yeah. a bunch of great people, just this great uh, Twitter wrestling community that makes stuff like this possible. But I've been doing it for about two and a half years. Long story short, uh, I had been a guest on a lot of podcasts, being in a band, being a drummer, first and foremost, uh, not really in front of the microphone as much. Uh, a lot of people had encouraged me along the way to do a podcast. I had been working on a website, which was very, very difficult and hard, and I know nothing about programming or anything like that and just getting in front of a mic and I have some great people with me guys and gals who know their wrestling they know their movie trivia and just have great personalities these guys carry me that has turned into some great shows with great reviews pay-per-view predictions we have had you know here come the name drops we have had the likes of Jake the Snake Jim Ross, Velvet Sky, Summer Rae we've even had a Ghostbuster which for me is like amazing I love the Ghostbusters <laughs> Ernie Hudson uh, we got to cover all these cons and wrestling cons and horror cons and events. And it's really turned into something and just just a great, positive, creative outlet uh, where I can connect with people like you, man. It's It's been fantastic. And then the name comes from, uh, you know, you take pop culture. And my buddy, uh, Mike Vacchiano, we call him the Human Re Wrestling Encyclopedia, came up with the name The Bob Culture Podcast. So, uh, awesome. yeah, it's pretty cool, man. I, I dig it. And where can my listeners uh, find you? I'm guessing you're available on all popular podcast platforms, but uh, do you have any platforms that you uh, like to use in particular? Where can we find you? Uh, where can we find your podcast? Yeah, man. So shameless promo here, but I got to go bobculture.podbean.com. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, um, iHeart podcast uh, we're all over the place you can follow me at bob culture pod on twitter uh, which is again i keep saying just a great wrestling community where all of us fans connect and all of us great podcasters connect uh, so make sure you follow me follow johners follow the queen um, and yeah just great wrestling discussion all week Oh, indeed, indeed. And one one uh, name that you didn't mention there, one person that you have had the pleasure of yes. interviewing. Now, we spoke about this off air, uh, but this is probably the, the biggest name drop of all then, Rob, is yeah. you've had the pleasure, you've had the honour 
of interviewing Kurt Angle. So tell us about that interaction, how it all came about. Tell us about uh, your interview with Kurt Angle. He, 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 like you say, he's, he's a current signed WWE performer, um, it, which is very, very hard to come by when you're an independent podcaster like us. Usually we can get hold of uh, retired wrestlers or independent wrestlers. But yeah. somebody signed to the WWE is, is a lot more complicated, but you manage it. Yes, I did. And, and there's a lot of luck. And I, I thank uh, Mr. Angle for his time. He was fantastic. Long story short, my goal this year, um, I had spoken to Chris Van Vliet, who we know does all the wrestling interviews. He's great. And I had him on. He was fantastic. And he has the quote, uh, I think vague goals yield vague results. Uh, and he, it was all about setting goals for yourself. So my goal this year was to interview a contracted WWE superstar, which I have covered events with them and, and cons with them, but it's always very hard to get an interview with someone yeah. who's under contract, as you said, in WWE. Uh, I caught up with uh, Kurt or Mr. Angle at the horror con here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I went up to the table expecting a no, and I said, uh, now I covered this for, I'm a senior editor for thepopbreak.com. Uh, so I covered it on that site. You can check it out at thepopbreak.com. Full interviews there with the audio. I said, hello, Mr. Angle, Rob Crother from thepopbreak.com. Would you mind doing a short interview? Fully expecting a no. He says, well, how long of an interview would you like to do? And to me, my, I could have started <laughs> up and down. I'm like, he's going to say yes. So I said, two minutes, two minutes. You know, I wanted to say the right thing. Uh, we went a little over two minutes. He was fantastic. He had a bunch of positive stuff to say about indie wrestling, uh, his new role as a backstage producer. He had a lot of nice things to say about Baron Corbin. And he was just fantastic. I can't thank him enough for taking the time. I was there with my father-in-law. He was super nice to him. They were talking about belts. It was so, so cool. Uh, a couple wrestling sites kind of took what he said and spun it and made a, a negative thing. But everything he said was very positive. He had said along the lines of uh, it was hard adjusting for him being in the backstage role as opposed to being in the ring. And it was hard for him to watch. They spun it like, oh, it's hard to hard for Kurt Angle to watch WWE now. Or it was something like that. But, uh, I, you know, I'm all about journalistic integrity and he was fantastic. I can't thank him enough. And everything he said was very positive. So, you know, to just anyone out there, just keep trying. You get a million no's, but you never know who's going to say yes. Oh, absolutely. That's a, a lesson for me as well to keep trying and uh, getting these big interviews. But uh, thank you for giving us the, the lowdown on, on your excellent uh, kind of interaction with Kurt Angle there. That must have been a very special moment for you and one you'll never forget, I'm sure. But uh, uh, we're here to talk mostly about um, NXT, AEW, Worlds Collide. Um, but also towards the end of the show, we're going to be doing our predictions our preview of the war rumble pay-per-view now that's one of the pay-per-views i look forward to every single year it gets us officially on the road to wrestlemania it is one of them pay-per-views especially the war rumble matches in particular where you have veterans come back you have surprises uh you have people wrestle on there from nxt but uh what, what does the Royal Rumble pay-per-view mean to you? I'm guessing you've seen many of them. I'm guessing you're a, a childhood wrestling fan. You've kind of grown up watching wrestling. You've always seen uh, Royal Rumble every January. But what does the Royal Rumble mean to you? And uh, can you give us some of your, your favorite matches or, or moments or memories from the Royal Rumble throughout the years as a wrestling fan, Rob? That's a great question. So I'm actually um, a late wrestling fan. My, my buddy, uh, Mike Vagano, who's a big part of the show and who came up with the name, the Bob Culture Podcast, he, uh, we've been best friends since we were four. He was always watching wrestling and I was always, oh, it's fake. It's fake. I was that guy, believe it or not. It's fake. You know, the, you know, as you hear growing up and uh, not, it's not until I was in college and we were hanging out, he was watching and I was doing something on the computer and I had seen Rey Mysterio flying around the ring. And I'm like, this is awesome. And uh, Rey Mysterio obviously became my favorite, and that kind of opened the door to this this wrestling community and world and podcasting and all that. Uh, so the Royal Rumble, as you said, is the favorite pay-per-view or event. You know, the match itself. Now we have the Women's Royal Rumble, which is even more exciting. Yeah. And uh, just the, these amazing moments, like you said, you see a lot of these legends come back. You see a lot of returns. Um, we, we can start you know, speculating about who's going to come back or who's going to make a debut. But that's the most fun part about it. When you get down to the final four, uh, my favorite moments would be that there's a running joke where we watch uh, a pay-per-view at my buddy Matt's house, uh, the enforcer, the anti-smark on the show. And every time we watch something at his house, like even WrestleMania, like someone returns, like the Hardys return when we watch it at his house. <laughs> 
and Rey Mysterio came back in the Rumble. So for me, like all those moments, those are like my favorite Rumble moments. And then obviously I'd have to go back to Ray winning the Rumble in 2006, uh, the yeah. ultimate underdog. You know, that's my guy. So, um, yeah, man, what are your favorite? I'm just curious, what, what are your oh, favorite? Oh, well, what, I've got to say the Royal Rumble 92, 1992, yeah. when uh, Ric Flair won that uh, uh, amazing match. It was a star-studded Royal Rumble. There were, all the big names from the WWF back then were in this Royal Rumble, from yeah. Sid, Hulk Hogan, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Sergeant Slaughter, Ric Flair, The Undertaker, and so many more. It's such a fantastic uh, match and a really good show, all in all, to be honest with you. But um, it was that show that really cemented my kind of love for professional wrestling. I came across it maybe a year or so before, um, but I was watching VHS tapes from a friend. Uh, but then when I caught, when I kind of clapped eyes on, on the Royal Rumble 92, that really cemented it for me and completely hooked me from then. So the 92 Rumble has a special place in my heart. Now, which was the Rumble where you had Batista and John Cena go over the rope at the same time? Was that uh, 95 or no, uh, t- 2005 or 2006? One of those. But that was a really special yeah. moment. That was a really special Rumble purely because of the way it ended as well. And you had... I think it, they went over by mistake, didn't they? I think that uh, Batista was meant to have eliminated John Cena. They accidentally went over, tumbled over, touched the floor at the same time. This led all the officials coming out. Then Vince McMahon did his Vince McMahon strut out to the ring and he managed to <laughs> tour both uh, pectorals or, or uh, I, yeah, as he was getting into the ring. Do you remember that? And uh, he yeah. was there sitting on the floor, but that was quite a memorable moment. Uh, but uh, so many great moments when uh, Kevin Nash or Diesel came back as a legend and Booker uh, T and Gold. Just I love it when the legends come back as well. But uh, I'm really looking forward to talking about this year's Royal Rumble because harking back to the 92 rumble i said it was very star-studded this year's rumble is very reminiscent of that as far as being very star-studded having all the big names on there and lots of intrigue as to what might or might not happen so i can't wait to talk to you about uh, the 2020 war rumble a little bit later on then rob but uh, we're going to kick off this show by talking about this week's nxt so uh, you've right. caught up on this week's nxt and so have high now it was a very good show there was a lot going on and uh, NXT very rarely disappoints, to be honest with you. And uh, um, this week saw the, the grizzled young veterans defeat Undisputed Era in the first semi final of the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic um, uh, after the grizzled young veterans hit their ticket to mayhem combo in a hard fought match, a really good match between these two teams. Uh, thanks partly to uh, uh, an appearance from Walter and his uh, Imperium cronies uh, up in the balcony area, which kind of uh, d- d- distracted the wrestlers in the ring. and allow Drake and Gibson to get the uh, the pinfall there, go through to the final. In the second semi-final, we had Matt Riddle and Pete Dunne. Uh, they went over Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner um, from Imperium. And another really thrilling semi-final match in the Dusty Classic. Uh, no shenanigans this time around, just excellent tag team action. So the final of the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic then, Rob, is going to see Matt Riddle and Pete Dunne go up against the grizzled young veterans. Uh, so three out of the four there from the UK scene, as you're probably aware. And this is going to take place on next week's NXT. Uh, there was a fun exchange uh, between the four wrestlers after the match when they all stood on the on the rampway and, uh, and uh, Gibson uh, gave the, the bros awaits uh, a new and maybe more appropriate team name of uh, joint manipulation uh, so that yeah. was kind of a bit of a dig at Matt Riddle which I thought was quite fun there so Rob looking at next week's Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic Final you've got the grizzled young veterans on one side Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle on the other do you have a particular favourite? Who do you think might come out on top in that match? And uh, well, one other quick question. Being from from uh, New Jersey, from the States, uh, do you find it difficult to understand Zach Gibson's accent? Uh, I know I do, <laughs> and I'm a fellow Brit, but uh, as an American, do you, do, do, do you, do you grasp the Liverpudlian accent uh, as well as I do? <laughs> I, 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 I do, um, I, and I get what you're saying, but yes, yes, I do. Uh, they're all fantastic competitors. <laughs> It's it's strange. I think someone had pointed out the the stat where you kind of have these, you know, they call them strange bedfellow tag teams or these singles competitors that are put together, whereas you have more of the natural tag team with the grizzled young veterans who I'm now more familiar with and have been very impressed with versus, you know, the huge names, the Pete Dunn and the Matt Riddles. Um, I used to be when Matt Riddle came into NXT and had the feud with Cassie Sono, I was covering um a lot of the takeover events and I was very hard on riddle. Uh, I was not impressed with him with Cassius Ono and he is just 
come a long way. His strides, his matches with Adam Cole, um, he has just really won me over and um, really made me put my foot in my mouth. But he's been fantastic. Pete Dunne, the bruiser way. I mean, what what can you say? He's fantastic. On paper, you think these guys are going to win. You're going to have the broser weights, as they call them, which is, which is incredible. <laughs> um, you, you have, like I was saying, you have these strange bedfellow tag teams like Ricochet and Aleister Black, two of my yeah. personal favorites, uh, that were just kind of thrown together for the tournament, and they were great together. Um, you've well, had Samoa that Joe and Finn Balor, they were the first Justy Classic uh, winners, of course, and they were thrown together a makeshift tag team. And you, that was literally the next thing I was going to yeah. say, man. Yeah. Same brain, man. Great minds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so it, it's on paper, it looks like it's going to be the Broser Weights. At the same time, I could see it not going that way. And then you have an automatic great feud between Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle. That I mean, come on. That, yeah, that would be cool. Itself. Uh, and I would like to see like the more natural tag team, the the grizzled young veterans get it. Um, you know, as as I always say on my show, the real winners, the fans. But um, I'm gonna go uh, Matt Riddle and Pete Dunn, just uh, yeah. as NXT staples, man. I'm curious your your thought. Well, I I like your other alternative scenario where uh, the grizzled young veterans win, and it could lead to a little bit of a feud between Matt Riddle and Pete Dunne. I think that would be quite a fascinating match, and uh, neither of them really have, uh, like I say, a few set up in the singles competition yet on NXT, so maybe to go up against one another could be uh, some quite interesting matches, uh, whether they're uh, both tweeners or both baby faces, or maybe one of them could turn heel, but that could be quite an interesting scenario, but uh, Regardless yeah. of whether that happens or not, I'm going for a GYV, the Grizzled Young Veterans, uh, next week. Or at least I hope so. Big fan of those. I've seen them live quite a few times, and I'd like to see them win. And uh, it would add a bit more uh, credibility to the NXT UK brand as well, I suppose. But uh, we'll have to see. That's uh, that's next Wednesday on NXT. Uh also, on this week's NXT, we saw Finn Balor. He quickly disposed of Joaquin Wild, and then Shayna Baszler defeated Shotzi Blackheart. Now, I know that you're a fan of Shotzi Blackheart. Yeah. Um, you said that your your Hulu feed didn't quite show uh, everything you wanted to see of Shotzi, but uh, how long have you been a fan of Shotzi Blackheart then? I mean, she seems to be making some inroads on uh, NXT and making a bit of a name for herself, being in a, a bit of a mini feud with Shayna Baszler. That's not a bad way to start your NXT career, really, is it? No, not at all. And, and she's like coming right out of the gate. I'm so happy for that. First of all, I didn't even know Finn fought this week. That must have been cut out of my Hulu feed. I too, reckon so. I reckon so. I saw the Shotzi <laughs> stuff and I'm like, I didn't see this. I had to find the match on YouTube this week. Big Shotzi fan. Evolve comes to the greater Brooklyn, New York area. Um, and Shotzi was uh, actually uh, another name drop here, but was going to do an interview with us. She was so nice and fantastic. This was right after she got signed to NXT. And uh, we had done an interview with an indie wrestler. We were walking over to her and the security for the venue uh, kicked us out. And I was <laughs> devastated. I'm telling my editor, I was like, she was great. She was going to do the interview. But uh, regardless, she's fantastic in the ring. I mean, oozes charisma. She's got a great um, look. A great look. Uh, I love uh, green I mean, hair. <laughs> the green hair, the look, uh, the black heart, obviously a tribute to Joan Jett and the black hearts, uh, a yeah. big rocker. And uh, just her throwing Shayna over the rope a couple weeks ago, just a huge kind of day, not quite her debut. She debuted right before Christmas, I believe. Yeah. But what, what an entrance for her and her having this match. It was a little bit of a squash match, but uh, she did get a hit her spots. And just what a way to come out. Thrilled to see her in the picture. And, um, you know, she's a, you know, she's a lightning rod right now. It's going to go great for her in, in the match with Shayna Baszler already. I mean, come on. Uh, you you can't beat that. She's got a great future ahead of her. And, and uh, I, I don't know if you caught the finish to her match uh, with Shayna Baszler, but she she fought and she fought and she fought. And she didn't give up to the Carafield yes. cut straight away. Uh, you know, it took uh, a second go for Shayna to hook it in before Shotzi, uh, well, virtually passed out and then tapped out. Um, but uh, that was a really fun match. And I think that uh, they're going to push Shotzi to the moon. I, I really hope so anyway. But um, yes. I, I just want your, your quick thoughts on Shayna because... She's been on the NXT brand for about three years now, and uh, most of us thought she was ready to go on to either you know, Raw or SmackDown well over a year ago, to be honest with you, Rob. Why do you think that move hasn't happened yet? Uh, and, and why do you think Shayna is, is still on NXT? And, you know, uh, I mean, when, when should the move happen? When do you think is going to be the right time? 2020 has to be the, the year when we see Shayna up against some fresh competition, surely. That's a fantastic question, man. Really great. 
Uh, so she just lost the belt. She's been there forever. So we had to have this dominant long title reign. Now these NXT guys and gals, they love being there. You know, think they about do. the schedule. Think about the travel. She's been yeah. the face of the women's division. Heck, been the face of that brand for a long time. Mm. Shayna Baszler is unstoppable. She's part of a great faction. She's had one of the longest title reigns. Uh, Rhea Ripley getting that win, I thought, was the right call. You know, uh, same thing. We'll, I'm sure we'll talk about Keith Lee as well. I think that was the right call. But you have her now. She's not in like, you know, they kind of got rid of the rematch thing, which I'm kind of cool with. Now, now everyone's having rematches. She was kind of off TV after she lost the title. Now she's kind of back on TV, kind of like we said, giving Shotzi that that spotlight a little bit. Yeah, I think the time is very soon. And, uh, you know, not to fast forward too much, but let's be honest here. She's definitely going. I don't even want to say to the main roster because, you know, NXT, like you, is, is one of my favorites. I, yeah, I think it's more the of a sideways move nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So I don't yeah. want to say she'll get called up, but I see her making the move very soon. And let's be honest, I wouldn't be surprised to see Shayna Baszler in that Royal Rumble match as a heavy favorite. And that might so. be the move right there. Yeah, I hope so. And then we head into this week's uh, NXT main event. It was Roderick Strong defended his NXT North American Championship against Keith Lee. This was another really fun match. Uh, the, the odds, however, were heavily stacked against Lee with uh, Cole, Fish and O'Reilly uh, getting involved uh, from ringside when the referee's back was turned, of course. Uh, dastardly heels that they are. Uh, the match focused heavily on, on Strong uh, going after Keith Lee's uh, damaged left ankle. Yes. After last week's attack from the Undisputed Era, um, with, with Roddy getting the lion's share of the offense during this match, um, after, but after overcoming so much of Strong's offense, it was Keith Lee who delivered his, his uh, fireman's jackhammer. Um, I can't remember exactly what he calls it, but uh, a fireman jackhammer, I, I think, is what uh, Nigel McGuinness described it as. He hooked the leg. One, two, three, new NXT North American champion in Keith Lee. He's had an amazing last few months, especially, you know, the way that he was featured in the Survivor Series match. Everything uh, since then on NXT, the build up to this fantastic match and then the fantastic match against Roddy Strong this Wednesday on NXT. Um, so after this thrilling match, we had all four members of Imperium. They came out, they surrounded the ring uh, before getting into an all out brawl with all four members of Undisputed Era, uh, setting up their big match uh, this Saturday, tomorrow night as we speak uh, at Worlds Collide. So then... Rob, um, I don't know if this made you wince as it made me wince, but that chop from Walter that sent yeah. Adam Cole into stratosphere, he kind of he turned him inside out almost. Now, Rob, I have to ask you before I kind of get your thoughts on this match, how much would you have to be paid to be chops like that by Walter? Um, is, is there any money that you would be prepared to kind of say, yes, a million dollars, two million dollars, and I'll take a chop from Walter? Will you ever take a chop from Walter if the money was right? I think, you know, a two million sounds good. That sounds like, <laughs> right. I, I do it. I regret it. <laughs> that was insane. And, and Adam oh, Cole yeah. selling it uh, was, was amazing. He kind of did like a backflip just from the chop. Uh, we know how brutal those chops are from him. Uh, I, I will say this. Uh, I, I like the match between Keith Lee and Roddy Strong. Yeah. I, I had tweeted earlier that day. I think I tagged Triple H. Clearly he saw it. No, he didn't. But uh, <laughs> my, my point being, I said, like, don't sleep on Keith Lee. Like, it's hot right now. Yeah. Pull the trigger on this. Like, we, we have the, the prophecy. Yeah. E exactly, right? Uh, we have the prophecy where the uh, UE is dripping in gold. Now I, I could see Roddy being the first one to lose it. I was like, let's do this. Let Keith Lee win tonight. I like the match. It's always tough when you have, like, a real heavyweight versus – and Roddy's a strong guy. I mean, Roddy's strong. There you go. Um, it writes itself. But – him working the leg made it more believable. That that top rope kind of um, angle slam w was a little tough to swallow, but again, made for a great match. My big issue, though, was him getting that win was so important, was so huge. It was completely the right call. And I think he got the belt and kind of had to shuffle out of the ring and up the ramp and then Imperium and then UE, which I get, but I felt like that really took away from his moment. It's a bit uh, rushed. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, well, I, I thought the same watching it. And it I, I kind of, as it was going on, I was thinking, yeah, they must be running, you know, running out of time, close to where their two-hour, uh, two-hour window they have on USA. But it all worked out in the end, and I'm sure uh, we'll get to kind of a, a, a big celebration uh, of Keith Lee um, on next week's episode. And, and you, we'll talk about it more later. But it wouldn't surprise me if if he features quite heavily in the War Rumble match. And I can't wait to discuss yeah. Keith Lee and the possibilities of him in the Rumble a bit later on but uh, it was another really fun episode of NXT you can't go wrong when you switch on the TV to watch NXT every single week um, whether it's live or uh, whether you kind of record it and watch it back later on but uh, well, what's your preference when it comes to NXT or AEW which one do you have to watch live which one do you watch uh, kind of uh, the following day do you have a preference what's your kind of routine on a Wednesday night then Rob it that's a great question it's tough like I am an NXT purist they have been coming to this area uh, as the greater Asbury Park uh, area here in New Jersey for years. So I had, you know, when Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens and Finn Balor and Carmella and Bailey were all in NXT, they would come here. Uh, the Street Profits have been here forever when Nakamura was here. And we would always go to Asbury and see them and get autographs. And every year they would come through here or Tom's River. So I would see, you know, oh, now the next year Gargano's here and each year we would see these people that are now just like these huge stars. So I've always been an NXT guy. Uh, their house shows or live events that they call them now are always super incredible. Yeah. Uh, NXT is brilliant. I feel like they do everything, almost everything right. And, uh, you know, like just like putting the belt on Keith Lee was great. I think Gargano is is one of the best in the world. Johnny Wrestling. I call him Johnny Match of the Year. <laughs> uh, he, he's fantastic uh super just great human by the way too really great with the fans and uh that being said aw is just fresh and new and um i like a lot of what they're doing cody rhodes is all about the fans and i mean he's the kind of guy who's just like tell us what we're doing wrong and we'll fix it yeah. um he, he's another really super nice guy um we were at an event in philly and uh, they were breaking down the ramps. The show was over at AEW. And he just stayed while they were breaking down, shook hands, took pictures with everyone. You know, just like class act. Um, if I had to watch one live, you know, usually I, I end up watching neither of them live. I'm not around usually Wednesday nights. But it's usually NXT first because that, that's just my show. Uh, but a AEW, like you said, this week was fantastic. And yeah. it's... Uh, you know what they do every week. You 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 kind of see on Facebook. I think you post a lot of this too. I do. Um, guys like you and 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 the, the group like the Closed Fist who are also fantastic. You you post yeah. post like the match cards, which I like, and I almost, almost kind of don't like it now that every week we know almost every single match. Like I understand you got to hype two or three, but uh, it's almost like we know every single match. So sometimes I look at both of those and I'm like, all right, which one am I going to watch first? But nine times out of ten, I I, I have to go NXT. Yeah, good choice, good choice. But uh, like I say, if it was the other way around, um, you know, it, it'd be just as good because AEW is, is pumping out some really good stuff at the moment. But uh, yeah, a uh, fantastic uh, episode of NXT. You mentioned that you're from Asbury Park, New Jersey. Is that right? Did I hear that correctly? Yes, uh, around so, so, the area, yeah, pretty so much. So the, the home of my uh, one of my favorite all-time wrestlers, Bam Bam Bigelow. Now, I have to ask you about Bam Bam. Now, I've been kind of campaigning for Bam Bam to go into the WWE Hall of Fame for years. Uh, not a very loud campaign, maybe just to myself and to my close friends. But uh, what's your thoughts on Bam Bam Bigelow? And like I say, he's one of the, the greatest big men of all time. And... Uh, you know, you just the, the aura about the man, the, the tattooed head, the, the fantastic outfit, the great moves he used to perform as a 400 pounder. Um, what's your thoughts on Bam Bam and should he be going into the Hall of Fame, my friend? Uh, really good question. So I, I wouldn't say I'm close to this, but I know people I know. So being from this area, first of all, one of one of the all time great uh, for his size, the agility. Um you know, I worked at a movie theater down the road from here. He, we would see Bam Bam. We, he, he would be uh, rooting for his kids in uh, at a softball game. You know, so we, you know, Bam Bam was like the local celebrity. Wow. And um, yeah. I, I'm involved. How do, how do I put this? I'm involved with a, a lot of the indie promotions around here, and and there are people who are related to him and know him and. The first thing that I had asked them was uh, the same thing that you asked me, like, why did you know, did they call like what's going on? Um, I, I think it's private information, so I, I don't want to get into it too much, but I will. Uh, 
I, I feel like it almost happened. Uh, I don't know why it hasn't happened yet. Uh, I feel like WrestleMania was just here. Uh, that was the time to do it. Um, so there's, there, I guess there's, I guess maybe it almost happened. Uh, I don't really know from things I've been told, but uh, I'm shocked that it didn't. He, he absolutely deserves to be. Um, and again, just being like kind of a local celebrity in our area, uh, no question, just in terms of his career alone. Uh, should definitely be in the Hall of Fame. No yeah, question. It's got to happen. Got to happen. Got to. But sometimes politics gets involved and family yeah. gets involved. But uh, exactly. Yeah, it's got to happen one day. I'll be disappointed. Him and Vader, the two of the best big men wrestlers of all time, they have to be in the yes. WWE Hall of Fame soon. And it's a shame that they, uh, you know, can't be around when it does happen. But uh, hopefully that'll happen soon. Let's have a little look at uh, Worlds Collide then, Rob. So this is taking yeah. place the night before the Royal Rumble. It's not a big card. It's very typical of an NXT takeover, but it's not a takeover. The first time uh, that they've done a, a card like this before a big pay-per-view and it not being a takeover. And it's a Worlds Collide. Now, they've done Worlds Collide events at uh, WWE Fan Access for WrestleMania and Raw Rumbles previously, but they're kind of been like taped uh, shows. But this time it's kind of more of a, a takeover vibe. But you, the reason why it's a Worlds Collide is because you've got superstars from NXT going up against superstars from the NXT UK. UK brand and they literally are going to be going up against one another uh, so the brands collide the worlds collide it all makes sense so let's have a look at some of the matches not to go into too much detail about any of these but I just want your opinion on some of these so um DIY Johnny Gargano you've mentioned him uh, Johnny Gargano Johnny match of the year Johnny takeover uh, teaming up with Tommaso Ciampa uh, both former NXT uh, heavyweight champions reviving the DIY tag team that kind of kick started it all for them really uh, going up against Mustache Mountain and Mustache Mountain uh, Tyler Bate Trent Seven fantastic wrestlers in their own right but they probably had more success um, as a tag team of previously NXT tag team champions NXT UK uh, no I don't know if they've been NXT UK tag team champions maybe that's something to come but certainly previously NXT champions uh, tag team champions now they're going up against one another this is going to be a really fun match the reformation of DIY going up against Mustache Mountain give us your thoughts on this one buddy and, and can you pick a winner um let me say this if this was the only match on the card give this match an hour i mean this oh, is worth the i'd price be happy for sure yeah i mean this is worth the price of admission or the wwe network however you want to say it uh this is a dream match a mustache mountain fantastic i mean you can't say enough great things about tyler Bate and what he's able to do as far as his size his strength his agility uh, i'm a huge gargano guy as i said earlier yeah. mr year um, the guy just his not just his in ring work, but his psychology is fantastic. The tandem offense between both teams is going to be off the charts. Uh, I'm always excited to see Ciampa and Gargano in the ring together because, I mean, their chemistry is amazing. Whether they're facing each other, whether they're teaming up together, I wouldn't be surprised if if there was some sort sort of turn. I wouldn't even mind it because what a great storyline that was. The fact that they can kind of reunite and, and you know feud and all that different stuff i can't say enough great things about both teams uh possible match of the year contender i'm saying it mm, now yeah yeah i mean uh mustache mountain had some great tag team matches with uh, undisputed era going back a couple of years ago when they were feuding over the tag team titles in nxt so yeah match of the year contender it could well be I'm expecting some sort of storyline to come out of this match. I mean, we never quite had the conclusion we were all after between Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano, did we? We were expecting that big WrestleMania weekend uh, blow-off match that didn't take place due to Tommaso's uh, neck surgery. That should have been uh, almost a year ago, or uh, WrestleMania last year. So it'll be interesting to see how they gel together, whether the, the dynamics between the two uh, two individuals are still there. Um, it's going to be a tough one to call. I, I can't really pick a winner, to be honest with you. I think my, my heart probably tells me Mustache Mountain because they're a UK team, and I've seen a lot of Trent Seven and Tyler Bate in the flesh. Um, uh, but my head probably tells me that it could go to Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, just that feel-good factor, that feel-good moment uh, to have the, the DIY back together and a win under their belts on a big show um so yeah i'm, I'm gonna go for diy I, I won't mind at all if i'm wrong on this occasion though but so that's gonna be a great match um I'll, it's I'll, I'll, at, I'll, go ahead i'm sorry i'm sorry to cut you off i never i never gave you my pick i was so excited oh. about this match <laughs> um I, I gotta go diy as well and i'll say this uh something you guys may have noticed but like over the past 
six months, eight months. You notice Gargano has not been in a lot of matches. Outside of those three mm-hmm. matches with Adam Cole, he was here at a signing recently, and then there was a NXT event here in Asbury Park. He did the signing the day before, did not perform at the event. This is when he was a NXT champion. Uh, I think he, I mean, he just came back from an injury, but I think he's beat up. I think he's hurt. They haven't really gone into detail about any of his injuries, but if you notice, Gargano has not been wrestling every week. He has probably had, what, less than 10 matches on TV this year? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're this absolutely year. spot on. And I, I think it's going back probably the last four, five, six months that we haven't seen an awful lot of him. Certainly since uh, he was taken out during Finn Balor's heel yes. turn. We haven't really seen a lot since then. And that happened, what, four or five months ago. And there were rumors that he was, possibly suffering from a neck injury, might have to have uh, surgery. I think he's, he's evaded having uh, neck surgery, so he's kind of just rehabbed yeah. uh, back to recovery. But um, I agree with you. I think there's some sort of something more serious underlying um, you, because otherwise we might have seen him in more more matches than we have. Now, they've already announced Johnny Gargano against Finn Balor for TakeOver Portland on yes. February the 16th. Now, that's going to be an awesome match. That's going to be an amazing match. So I think they're kind of using this tag match on Saturday night as a little bit of a, um, you know, to shake off the ring rust, maybe getting ready for Finn Balor on February the 16th. Um, but it will be it, it, it will be interesting to see how he wrestles on Saturday night, whether he shows any signs of ring rust or whether they're protecting him in any way uh, to prevent him from getting injured further. But I'm sure they wouldn't have cleared him for Saturday night unless he was 100%. So, uh, But it would be good to see Johnny Gargano back in a ring. I think that that's the most important thing to see him back in action on Saturday night, most definitely. Uh, speaking of Finn Balor, he's going up against a NXT UK regular very popular in the European indie scene before he signed with WWE, Ilya Dragunov. So I don't know if you know too much about Ilya Dragunov, but uh, he had that really good match with Cesaro at NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff. I was at that show as well in August. Fantastic match. Now, Dragunov came out on the losing end in that match, and you know it was a tough match against Cesaro. Um, but uh, he's going up against Finn Balor here. So you've got two very similar wrestlers in terms of size, stature, uh, physicality. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean... What's your thoughts on on these two individuals, and how do you think the match might end up then, Rob? Not as familiar with Dragunov. Uh, You know, I did a little bit of homework going into this one. Like you said, kind of the same, you know, similar kind of competitors in this one. I don't see any way that Finn Balor loses, especially going into this match with Johnny Gargano in Portland, I believe it is, at NFC. I just don't see it. Um, Like I I keep saying, the real winners are going to be the fans in this one. I mean, this card alone, I mean... In some ways, I'm more excited than for Worlds Collide than I am for the Royal Rumble undercard matches. Uh, so it, it's going to be interesting. If you think back to what Worlds Collide was before they did, what, 205 Live versus NXT versus NXT UK uh, with some other guys thrown in there. And it was a lot of, you know, no offense to anyone, a lot of the lower card guys. Um, and this is just like a whole nother thing. And, you know, usually we have a takeover at this time. I think around this time last year was one of my match of the year contenders ricochet versus johnny gargano which to yeah. me was just, oh my gosh uh, that that might have been my match of the year had not those adam cole gargano matches happened uh, <laughs> i'm a big gargano fan of family <laughs> but um but i i don't see finn losing this one in any way shape or form going into this uh pay-per-view coming up what february yeah, just a couple of weeks around the corner, two or three weeks. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm going to really enjoy this match. It'll be great to see Ilya Dragunov uh, have a bit more exposure on maybe a bigger stage in front of a big crowd on an important show. Uh, but I've got to agree with you. I've got to go with Finn Balor on this one as well, to be honest with you. And then there's a, a fatal four-way match for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Now, current champion uh, Angel Garza, he's going to be defending against Isaiah Swerve Scott. Um, and uh, NXT UK regulars Jordan Devlin and Travis Banks. So uh, I'll give you my prediction first on this one then, Rob. I mean, I'm a big fan of Jordan Devlin. I've been uh, secretly kind of pushing or hoping for Jordan Devlin to be maybe a contender to Walter's NXT UK championship somewhere down the line. And I know those two have had their their battles in the past, but uh, now Jordan Devlin's kind of with uh, some, some very, very capable, very agile cruiserweights on the NXT scene. Uh, Travis Banks, a former Progress Wrestling Champion over here in the UK. Isaiah Swerve Scott, uh, a very, very capable, very interesting wrestler. He, he's got a, a bit of a hybrid style and could do kind of 
many very fun, interesting things in the ring. Angel Garza has got a great character, great look, a really good gimmick, uh, quite an infectious personality, uh, but he's, he's great in the ring. He's got this big Garza family heritage behind him as well. Um, I've got to go for an Angel Garza retain, to be honest with you. As much as I love Jordan Devlin and would like him to kind of shine on the night and possibly get a victory, uh, it'd be great to have somebody from the NXT UK brand be the Cruiserweight champion as well, but I've got to go for Angel Garza. I think that uh, he's too soon into his championship run to lose it at the moment, but uh, I think he's he's probably the, the bigger character, the biggest personality out of the four, and I think he's the one to retain on Saturday night. But what about yourself then, Rob? Uh, I actually agree with you. You have Angel Garza, who is the total package. He's got He's got the charisma. He's got the character. The guy just got engaged, uh, essentially, on live television. You know, you got to say congratulations. The guy's it's good to be Angel Garza right now. Don't pull the belt off him right now. This is going to be a great fatal four-way match. I would love to see Devlin get the belt. In fact, that might even be the right call. Bring that belt to the UK. I, I think that's great. You know, we have this cruiserweight belt that's gone from 205 Live to Raw uh, to NXT to NXT UK. That would be a really cool story. I like it. But there's no way. I, I just don't see Angel Garza losing this one. He is He's living the dream right now. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, Tony Storm, she's going to be taking on Rhea Ripley. Now, these two have fought over the NXT or the NXT UK Women's Championship in the past. They've had their, their battles uh, on various NXT UK takeovers, but now they're here at Worlds Collide. Uh, roles are reversed slightly because Rhea Ripley is the NXT Women's Champion. Tony Storm uh, is, is, is going to go after her belt, of course. Um, now, these two, they've had some good rivalries in the past. They know each other very well. I think this could be quite an interesting match. Um, I know that Rhea Ripley is massively over with the full sale crowd, uh, but in front of a bigger audience, and she, she was very popular at uh, Survivor Series and had a really good turn at uh, TakeOver War Games as well. So much like Keith Lee, she's had an incredible last few months. Um, Tony Storm, just getting uh, more familiar with the, with the American crowd, of course. But uh, how, how do you kind of see this match going and uh, who, who are you going to pick to come out the NXT Women's Champion on Saturday then, Rob? Man, I would be happy with any result. Right now, Rhea Ripley is just uh, killing it. I, I love the decision to put the belt on her. Yeah. Uh, I love what she's been doing. Uh, she's, she, you know, she has a great story. If you listen to the podcast with Lillian Garcia, I'm a huge fan. Huge fan of Tony Storm as well. Another great story. Uh, I will say this going back to this week's NXT real quick. Io Shirai. I mean, just what a transformation for her. She's fantastic. I was a little bummed that match got cut short. At the same time, I think it was the right call. You have Io Shirai, Tony Storm. Uh, no one lost in that one, so I think that was the right call. But super bummed that match was cut short because I was so excited for that one. Uh, but now we have Tony Storm versus Rhea Ripley. Uh, you know, this is her brutality. I got to say, Rhea Ripley's going to uh, retain and beat Tony Storm this time around. Yeah, I, I think so too. So, so far, we haven't had uh, uh, a, a title change in the Cruiserweight Championship. We're sticking with Angel Garza. We're sticking with Rhea Ripley to retain the NXT Women's Championship as well. Uh, and that brings us to the main event. So it's kind of faction versus faction, an eight-man tag match. You've got Imperium with Walter, Fabian Eichner, Marcel Bartel, Alexander Wolf going up against uh, UE, Undisputed Era, Adam Cole, the current NXT champion, of course, uh, Fish and O'Reilly, the current NXT tag team champions, and uh, Roderick Strong, no longer the North American champion, but two fantastic factions here. This, this is going to be a brutal, hard-hitting, action-packed eight-man tag. We've seen these two teams collide over the last couple of weeks, of course. UE, they, they gate-crashed Walter's victory at TakeOver Blackpool 2, another event that I was at. And when UE came oh, out, yeah. uh, it was the, the roof came off the Empress Ballroom <laughs> in Blackpool. And, it, nice. and uh, I think a lot of us were kind of semi expecting it going into the show is, you know, it was kind of wishing and hoping that, uh, that they'd kind of give us a bit of Adam Cole action. And they did at the very end. And uh, the roof came off that place when they attacked Walter. The roles were versus this week on NXT, where Walter and Imperium kind of got a, got their own back on UE and uh, that chop again. I'm still feeling it, just watching it from <laughs> uh, from my TV screen, to be honest with you. But uh, um 
this is going to be a really good match. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that this is going to be the main event. I'm assuming this is going to go yeah. on last. Um, it certainly deserves to be. Now, of course, you've got the current NXT UK champion, Walter, the current NXT champion, Adam Cole, so champion versus champion. Um, it's going to be a, a great match. Now, what, one thing I think would make this even better was if it is inside a cage or maybe it would be great to have these two teams in, in a war games environment. Uh, but uh, they're not. It's going to be, you know, inside a, a 20 by 20 foot ring. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. What about yourself, man? Th- this is uh, great. You have two great factions, but they're also both heel factions, which is very, mm. very interesting. Uh, and just like the way they made this happen, you know, you have, you know, kind of like us, you have, you know, some brand in the UK, you got one brand in the US, and they made this happen one way or another. I'm excited for this. I think, you know, you notice I'm picking a lot of the NXT uh, teams as opposed to the NXT UK teams. Now I'm kind of going back to that Mustache Mountain one. I'm like, oh, maybe Mustache Mountain will win this one. But anyway, I think uh, I think Imperium gets this one for a lot of reasons. Uh, Adam Cole's had an amazing year. I, I got to meet him recently. <laughs> Another name drop. But I got to meet him recently. He had the cast on. Uh, this was right before. For his, uh, what did he have? That ladder match was versus Di- Dijakovic, I think. Yeah. Uh, but and we were just like, "How's the wrist, man?" And this and that. He he goes, and he this was all in good humor. He wasn't being negative, but he he goes, he goes, you know, I have my good days, I have my bad days, but they keep making me wrestle, you know, like, <laughs> and you know, and it's true. I mean, he's having ladder matches, war games. Yeah, uh, he's broken broken wrist or something, and they wouldn't give him any days off. He's uh, exactly. he was yeah. I believe exactly. I, I feel I'm just I'm like waiting for him to go on the show. I don't want him to. I just feel like, you know, he's you know, so he's going to get have to get his wrist fixed or something like that. Who knows? But he's he's been killing it right now. Yeah. I think the loss of the title to Roddy Strong tells us a lot. The prophecy has come to an end. The um, the era, you know, it's literally an end of an era. You know, I think we're going to get some backstage segment with some flack towards Roddy. Like, hey, man, like, you know, you lost it. To Keith Lee and. You know, you're kind of like the weak link right now, and that'll play into the match a little bit. And this, not to say this would be the ultimate end of the Undisputed Era, but I think this is a little bit of a minor speed bump or downfall, whereas maybe you do kick a Roddy out. Um, Maybe there is some sort of adjustment in the team. And I think after the way Walter was utilized at Survivor Series, which was very questionable to me after the dominant force that he has been, that was a huge question mark. I, I don't know what went on there or who made that call. Uh, like I said, just a huge question mark. Walter is going to be the guy standing tall at the end of this match. I don't see it any other way. And I'm going to give the win to Imperium. Yeah, I mean, a couple of things I want to touch on from what you said there. Firstly, you know, based on our predictions previously, we haven't had any or many uh, NXT UK wins so far in our predictions. So uh, it would kind of make sense for them to throw Imperium, uh, Walter and Co a bone on this one and maybe get an, uh, an NXT UK win um, under under our belt. But, you know, for the other reason, I like your fantasy booking with some sort of backstage angle going on where, you know, where potentially they are upset with Roddy for losing the North America title and this leads to maybe some you know some miscommunication in the ring during match time and uh, allowing Imperium to get the advantage and the win and uh, I like the the image that you drew there the visual of, of Walter standing tall uh, when, when the show goes off is a little bit of a, a make do for how he was treated at Survivor Series so yeah. I'm going to agree with you I'm going to go for an Imperium win here I think that uh, it has more benefits more pluses more pros than cons to have uh, Walter and uh, Imperium standing tall at the end of it and that would be a good visual a good way to end Worlds Collide on Saturday night but uh, I, I think it's going to be a fantastic match and uh, I mean we, we've, we've said already it's going to be an amazing card and it, you know on paper already it looks stronger than the Royal Rumble undercard uh, so yeah. definitely I'll, I'll be staying up to watch that no doubt but uh, that's worlds collide going to be on the wwe network I believe it's kicking off uh, uh, 7 Eastern uh, over in the States, uh, midnight over here in the UK, but it's going to be one that I'll be staying up for, definitely. But uh, uh, we've got a quick question from um, Dit, uh, Dit's on Wrestling Podcast, uh, another UK uh, uh, podcaster, YouTuber. I've had Dit's on the show many times. He's a really great guy. Um, Now, he asks, uh, are you happy with the Worlds Collide event, or would you have preferred to have had a traditional NXT takeover prior to one of the big main roster pay-per-views. So uh, we, we referred to it earlier where usually ahead of a, a big main roster pay-per-view, you'd have a takeover. And this is, uh, I mean, where we were looking at our wrestling schedules back
back last year, we saw this worlds collide thing. Think, we think, well, what, what's happened to takeovers? Are they going to stop doing takeovers? It does appear to be a one-off, or certainly maybe just an annual thing instead of a quarterly thing. And it's not taken over from takeover. Um, how many times can I say takeover in one sentence? But it, <laughs> it, it seemed a bit of a strange announcement to start off with. Now. Having discussed it with yourself, I'm very happy with the fact that they're running a Worlds Collide um, on this occasion. But um, would you have preferred a, a takeover as opposed to a Worlds Collide, um, you know, coming into this weekend? What are your thoughts? Uh, I think that's a fantastic question. What's up, Dits? But basically, uh, I mean, think about it as a fan. You know, you have quality and quantity, and we kind of have the best of both worlds, if you think about it. Now, like I said, last year's takeover was one of my favorites with Ricochet versus Gargano. Yeah. Very surprised that we have a Worlds Collide event instead of a takeover right now. That being said, this isn't the Worlds Collide that we saw before with the under or, you know, the lower card guys. Again, no offense to anyone. 205 Live NXT UK versus NXT. We had all these kind of matches on the network. It wasn't really like a pay-per-view or live event, as they call it now. I think, well, let's think about it. We have uh, Royal Rumble weekend. We have something called Worlds Collide where we have NXT UK, which just had a phenomenal pay-per-view versus uh, NXT. Yeah. We have these two, like, we just were so excited talking about this card. I can't complain. You can call it whatever the heck you want. I mean, we have World <laughs> Five. Oh, and by the way, in a couple of weeks, uh, there is something called NXT TakeOver in Portland. So I'm good. You know, Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Everyone's a winner. The, the, the wrestling yeah. fans, are, are, the wrestling community are winners on this one. And, and possibly knowing um, that, that they were going to do NXT Portland uh, just three weeks down the line, they probably thought it'd be, it'd be too close together to have two takeovers back to back so close together. So it does make sense. But uh, hopefully Dit, that answers your question. Uh, but uh, we're going to move on rapidly now to this week's AEW Dynamite then, Rob. So it's from the Norwegian Pearl set in sail around the Bahamas. Just picture it now. I bet the, the weather was glorious. Uh, you, I, I've never been to the Bahamas. Have you been to the Bahamas, Rob? I have once. Uh, Nassau and uh, what was it? Co Coco Cay, I believe, was the island of the cruise ship. Yeah, it was really, really cool, man. Oh, it was all awesome. wonderful. But this was the, the Chris Jericho rock and wrestle rager at sea part two um, and uh, part two of the AEW Bash at the Beach shows. Uh, of course, they had uh, part one last week. So uh, this week's show was, was pre-recorded. It was on a 24 hour delay. Um, obviously, you know, uh, not a very reliable satellite signal. So they didn't really want to gamble with going live. But uh, I've heard that uh, Cody is quite keen on doing a live uh, AEW Dynamite from the Jericho Cruise next year, 2021. Oh, but, wow. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but not this year, but I don't think that kind of lessened the quality having it on a tape delay. And to be honest with you, I didn't see too many spoilers. So I think um, because of the, the poor Wi Fi on the ship, not many spoilers were getting out apart from uh, John Moxley doing his karaoke. That was the only thing I saw uh, <laughs> for, that kind of leaked out from the shop, but uh, from the ship. But the first match that kicked off the whole show was SCU uh, defending their AW World Tag Team titles against uh, a makeshift tag team of sorts, I suppose. Kenny Omega versus Hangman Adam Page. We spoke about makeshift tag teams earlier, about the Dusty yeah. Rose tag team classic. Uh, but this this match was for the AEW World Tag Team titles. It kicked off the show. And in this one, Scorpio Sky, he very nearly had the match won after Adam Page inadvertently nailed his own partner, Kenny Omega, with a buckshot lariat. Uh, however... Adam Page did make amends for dropping his own partner by connecting with not one, but two more buckshot lariats. Firstly, uh, onto Scorpio Sky out on the rampway, and the second dropping Kazarian uh, back inside the ring. Uh, he covered, he hooked the leg, he got the one, two, three. And that was a really good match. And we have new AEW World Tag Team Champions in the shape of Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page. Uh, the match here was action-packed. It went just under 20 minutes. Uh, now, Rob, I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. And also, where AEW appear to be going with this uh, Adam Page drinking angle. Uh, fond of the old brewskis and uh, the, the beverages before and after matches, maybe. But uh, we, we saw Page celebrating with the fans after the match. And a couple of couple more brewskis, um, and he got body surfed out of there, body surfed away from the ring as Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. They kind of looked on. Um, I don't know what what the, the look was on their face, but uh, they didn't seem too happy with Adam Page uh, from inside the ring there. But uh, give us your thoughts on this uh, the title change and uh, your thoughts on the angle that they're trying to portray with with Adam Page and uh, going down more of a, a sinister route uh, with with, a, with a, maybe a, a little bit of a, some demons there with his drinking. Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting angle. I, I think it's fresh. 
Uh, you know, the, we did kind of that running joke. There's that gif of him uh, being caught off guard where he's taking the drink and he's like, oh, I'm on air or whatever. And <laughs> my my buddy, uh, Bill Bodkin, who was on our podcast, started out the podcast like that. You know, he took a sip of his drink and he was kind of <laughs> swallowing. He's like, oh, hey, you know, and that's how we started the podcast. So that's kind of like a running joke with us. Uh, Hangman Page is someone, you know, I don't know how I feel about him uh, just in terms of, of his character, but I do like the angle. Um it, it, it's good. Like, I don't love or hate him. He he intrigues me, which is, I think, what you want, which is really good. And the angle intrigues me. Kenny Omega is always fantastic. Scorpio mm. Sky, you know, just amazing in the ring. He always, always impresses me. So this whole angle was very interesting. If you remember, I think a couple months back, you know, you have the Being the Elite YouTube series and all that. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Paige kind of was more so separating himself from yeah. the Elite as you know, as compared to some of the other guys. So I think this kind of plays into that angle a lot. Every time these guys have a match together, they end up whacking each other or hitting each other. Even when he made the tag in this match, you know, the, the crowd's chanting for Kenny Omega. And, and we'll talk about the environment on that cruise ship. That was made. The episode oh. was amazing. But uh, when he makes the tag, the crowd's chanting Omega. And he's like, all right, you know, and he, he just kind of tags in Kenny Omega. And you can kind of see the look on his face. So it tells a story. I like that a lot. The drinking angle is very interesting. And then the fact the backstage reporter is interviewing hangman and every time he tries to say something he gets cut off it's interesting i mean i think we all know this is going to be your hangman versus kenny omega thing giving them the belts is interesting i don't think scu deserve to lose the belts i thought the jab at um oh hey like you know i thought young bucks you guys i thought you were going to win this belt before uh we did that's that's really interesting i thought that was another interesting kind of storyline so uh it's fresh i dig it uh i think again i don't know how to feel about hangman page right now but it's it's fresh it's interesting it's something we haven't really seen before that they, they took that gif they took some you know things that he's been doing and and kind of rolled it out and do a storyline so i think it's it's new it's interesting i'm 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 along for the ride yeah i am too and i i'm interested because when hangman page was portraying a baby face i felt his character was quite bland to be honest with you quite plain yeah. and ordinary so this is kind of adding a few more layers to his character um i like the slow turn of him of turning heel let's be honest i think that's where it's heading and um i i like the dynamic now that he's tag team champions with kenny omega where that might lead obviously it's going to lead to an inevitable feud between the two of them but um there's going to be weeks and weeks of storytelling here between the two wrestlers and um it'll be interesting to see this drinking angle how far um aw prepared to go with this because you know it's it's uh, quite a sensitive subject to a lot of people that have had relatives and uh, people they know friends and family yeah. that have had drinking problems so to bring it out into you know a wrestling angle might be controversial in some senses but if sure. they do it if they do it right and don't overplay it um don't take it too far i think it could be an interesting way to tell this story and the eventual heel turn and feud uh between himself and jerry so I'm definitely going to be watching uh, what they do very closely and uh, watching AEW Dynamite very closely over the next few weeks to see how they unfold this story. But uh, I'm intrigued. I'm, I'm very interested, much the same as you are. But uh, then we also saw an in-ring promo from uh, Dr. Britt Baker after her match with Priscilla Kelly, where she appeared to turn heel herself on Tony Schiavone and the fans. Uh, and all I have to say is I thought that she looked very comfortable as a heel here during this promo. She's uh, calling herself a role model, clearly showing off, uh, bragging about how she believes she's the hottest woman on the ship and after telling Tony Giovanni um, that uh, AEW and this was his meal ticket after calling him a, a, a shitty barista Shivani, Shivani was even kind of caught on camera as saying uh, what the F uh, so that was something that's kind of done the rounds of the internet but uh, what's your thoughts on, on Britt Baker's heel turn and this is another kind of fairly subtle maybe not so subtle heel turn that's kind of been unfolding over the last few weeks I, I, I think much the same as Adam Page Britt Baker as a, as a baby face is quite bland quite ordinary not really doing anything for me I'm a little I'm more intrigued and more interested in her heel character and the work she's doing at the moment um, do you feel the same? So th I'm, I'm, I'll respectfully disagree a little bit. I thought the segment was a little 
wonky. I get what you're saying about her being bland as a face. I, I will kind of agree with that. Yeah. Uh, we had we had a big discussion on our, our Rumble, po- shameless promo, uh, on our podcast about how uh, a lot of the characters, you have guys like Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens are typically heel kind of playing faces. And, uh, you know, Bailey typically a face being a heel. We had a big conversation about stuff like that. So the heel turns are interesting right now. Uh, Priscilla Kelly, great, you know, great match with her. Another Evolve uh, persona or character that is really, really great. I wish we could have seen a little bit from her in that match. Um, the the jab at uh, Tony made for a great gift that's on the internet right now mm-hmm. that everyone's using. But her promo, you know, I saw where they were going with it, you know, from her reactions in the crowd uh, the past coming weeks. You kind of saw it coming. But I thought the... I, you know, I'm hotter than everybody and, you know, and I'm mean now. I thought it was a little cliche when it would like with heel turns. It's it needs that shock value, I think. Uh, and it needs to be I wouldn't say flawless, but this I need to see more. I need to see what she's going to bring to the table. The way the segment played out was also kind of weird because they kind of went to commercial while like it kind of. Like yeah. I, I, Jim Ross even said, like, oh, like we're we're gonna step away from this or whatever, you know, and uh, in his Jim Ross way, and he's great. But um, it's so great to hear his voice every Wednesday night. But I think I I don't know. It just didn't it didn't land with me. I need to see it play out because I thought a lot of the things she was saying was I'm hotter than all of you, and you know, you're you're the announcer. Well, I hate you because you're nice, and you know, like the the jab was you know the yeah. barista thing was funny and made for a great gift. But I need to see more, and uh, it's not a character I'm invested in right now. And I th- and I think I should be. She's very talented, uh, you know. Obviously, uh, DM, you know, dentist. That that's amazing. I need to see more of what's going on with this. You need, you know, like I keep going back to Io Shirai. Like, what a transformation! She comes out with the mask, and Rey Mysterio is a role model, and she's, you know, this cutesy, uh, you know, genius of the sky, and is great. And then that transformation, she just comes out different music. To- different persona, different aura movement about her. And it's just flawless. Like, um, you know, again, NXT does a lot of things, right? So I need to see this play out. I didn't love the segment, especially because it, it went right to commercial. And even Jim Ross was like, all right, we're going to get out of here. And it was it's very just awkward. Was it? It's very awkward. Yeah. It was bumpy. I, I feel yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to see uh, how this goes, but uh, maybe I'm just infused by it because uh, I wasn't a big fan of her baby face persona. Maybe yeah. this is more of a refreshing change as far as I'm concerned. But uh, yeah. then that led us into the match between uh, the, the Jurassic Express and the inner circle. You had Le Champion, uh, Chris Jericho, Santana and Ortiz. This was another really fun match. The fans were really into this. Um, and in what would have been the shock, uh, not just of the year, but possibly of the century, Marco Stunt very nearly got uh, the pinfall on on uh, Le Champion Chris Jericho from a brilliant 450 splash, uh, which would have been a stunning upset. However, it was Chris Jericho who got the match won, uh, thanks to his Judas effect uh, back elbow on Marco Stunt for the pinfall victory. Now, Rob, uh, the fans on the cruise ship were really into uh, Jericho's entrance on this one. We've seen the clips ah. on the internet, but you were watching as well, all singing along to Judas. Now, I understand that you're, you're heavily into your music. You've already said that you're a, a drummer. Uh, and uh, I can imagine you sitting there in front of your TV, uh, a big Jericho fan, singing along to Jericho's entrance, sitting at home watching this. But uh, uh, am I right in, in thinking that you were singing along to this entrance as well? I know I was. It's uh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the answer, the answer is yes. Uh, when we were at the <laughs> AEW event in Philly, everyone was singing along, mostly to the chorus. The cool thing about this is everyone was singing the whole verse, the whole chorus. The music fades. They're still singing it. Again, we talk about that cruise ship environment. It was a party. You know, there's a pool. It was just amazing. Uh, fantastic match with uh, Le Champion. Uh, Jericho's great. Santana and Ortiz, formerly LAX. Those guys are phenomenal. I hope to see more of them. One of the best tag teams in the world. Yeah. Um, I've seen them fight the likes of a local tag team here uh, called The Rep. They'll be signed very soon. Nate Carter, David McCall, got to give them a shout. They fought uh, LAX at the time about a year and a half ago. Just one of the best tag team matches I've ever seen. And Jurassic Express, I mean, come on. Marco Stunt, uh, so seeing him live, he, he really stole the show. Uh, I think he might have been fighting phoenix and pentagon at the, at the time at that match and just th- this guy's got it how can you not love luchasaurus just his look alone his presence awesome. he's like he's like kane but like a dinosaur you know? <laughs> and he's, he's got everything and jungle boys got it that match with jericho was great 
uh, just, yeah, man, what a, what a way to kick off the show and that cruise ship environment and the tunes. I mean, what, what more could you want? Yeah, they've got lightning in a bottle as far as uh, the Jurassic Express is concerned. And all three members are getting over. They're all very individual in what they can offer, uh, but they're all individually getting over massively with the fans for what they can offer. So uh, really, really happy with uh, what they're uh, doing and achieving in AEW. We're going to jump straight to the main event now. So uh, it, it was uh, a number one contenders match. John Moxley versus the Bastard Pack. And uh, these two fought uh they fought into the fans they fought up the cruise ship pack got tumbled down some stairs uh pack went after moxie's injured eye uh, which was stabbed by le champion after moxie turned his back on jericho's offer to uh, uh to join the inner circle uh pack missed a black arrow which um is, is a move that's been heavily protected in AEW uh, since uh pack's been wrestling for AEW. now pack eventually rips the bandages away from moxie's injured eye but it was john moxley who who came away on the winning end with his paradigm shift DDT for the win in a really hard fought match. Uh, but uh, this was an excellent match as well between two really amazing wrestlers. Uh, this, of course, sets up John Moxley to take on Chris Jericho for the AEW World Championship at the next pay-per-view, which is called Revolution on the 29th of February uh, next month, of course. Uh, so give us your thoughts on this main event. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit saddened to see Pac on the losing end. He's had a really good run in AEW, but somebody has to lose, of course, and I'm sure he's going to have more featured matches like this and uh, possible number one contender matches or maybe championship matches in the future but it's John Moxley's turn I think we all knew that it was inevitable that it was going to be John Moxley facing Chris Jericho at uh, Revolution and this is how they got there so uh, give us your thoughts on this one and uh, your thoughts on on the match that we're looking forward to Jericho versus Moxley on the 29th of next month well I think we all knew Mox was going to win this match mm -hmm. we all know we see Jericho versus Moxley ever since that inner circle proposal which was a lot of fun uh, I mean Great, fantastic match. You have fantastic competitors with Pac and Moxley. And, uh, I mean, who else can rock that eye patch slash bandage and fight a fantastic <laughs> match like that? I mean, besides just, like, rocking the look, you know, of course, like, Moxley is going to own it. But uh, just having, like, you know, I because, I, like, I, I'm sitting there watching the match, and I'm, like, closing one eye and just kind of, like, like, I feel like I would just, like, run into things all the time, you know It can't I mean? be easy and to just... wrestle when you're, when you're covered up, yeah, I mean, to get your bearings and your peripheral vision and, you know, be able to, you know, wrestle a wrestling match as you would expect the two of them to do. And uh, it didn't seem to hamper his ability at all. Yeah, I 100% agree. And uh, so it's just a great match. A lot of the spots off the top turnbuckle were really, really impactful and great. Like we said, the environment on the cruise ship was fantastic. Yeah. Really, really, really good match. I think we all knew Mox was going to win. And I'm excited to see Jericho take on Moxley. Do I think uh, we might even see a title change at that one? Who knows? Possibly, possibly, yeah. I think uh, you've definitely got number one and two in AEW, and uh, if anybody's going to do it, it could be John Moxley. And uh, they, they, they've had their feuds in the past on WWE, and I think one of them was uh, over a, a potted plant, and they had that uh, weird uh, Ambrose Asylum cage match. But this is different. Two different characters now, a different different environment. Uh, John Moxley, a, a much more serious. Uh, he's wrestling as himself, I suppose. Uh, but um, yeah, definitely a match I'm, I'm looking forward to. This match was awesome, but I think the right man won at, at the end of the day. And uh, Pac will get his chance somewhere down the line, I'm sure. Uh, wasn't to be on this occasion. But uh, another really fun episode of AEW Dynamite then, Rob. You know, I've, I've been watching it every week. Um, and as I mentioned to you off air, this could be the best episode of AEW Dynamite since they started yeah. back in October 2019. The atmosphere on the cruise ship, I thought that there wasn't anything that let the sh let the show down. And sometimes when you watch AEW Dynamite, there's some some things that are a bit ropey, some things that don't quite make sense, uh, some botches. We didn't have any kind of botches uh, this time around. Or certainly nothing that I've uh, noticed. Um, I enjoyed all the in ring work. I enjoyed all the promo work as well, and all the kind of continuation, all the angles they're trying to build. Um, what about yourself? I mean, I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it was the best episode of AEW Dynamite so far. Or certainly up there. Um, but uh, being on that cruise ship i think really added to it but to what about yourself uh absolutely and like you said just the environment as soon as, as, soon as the show kicked off you knew everyone was having a good time everyone oh, yeah. was partying i feel like almost every single person besides the the dude you know the 
the captain driving the ship. I feel like everyone was out there. It was great. Uh, you could see there was like also a hot tub that was kind of covered up, and the cover on the hot tub said AEW even. Uh, it, was, it was really great. Uh, the card was fantastic. The environment, the people singing, um, just, I, I mean, there's a couple threads on Twitter. Uh, I can't remember remember the handle, but someone had said, oh, post all your pics from Jericho Cruz. And it just seemed like everyone had a good time. Like, people were just, you know, like, getting food. And, oh, hey, here's, like, Santana and Ortiz. And, oh, we're chilling with Nyla Rose. And, like, it just looks like the best time ever, like you were saying. Like, I mean, any wrestling fan's got to do it. Jericho is just killing it. He killed it on the first one. I think they've already made plans for the third one. Uh, it, it's incredible. And this show was just, just because of the atmosphere – uh, you know, we can say the crowd can make or break it. Sometimes they try to hijack the show. And this was just perfect, even with the crowd surfing. Uh, I mean, you can't beat that. Yeah, it really was. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my two uh, co-hosts for our Royal Rumble review show, which is dropping on yeah. Tuesday coming, uh, they are or were both on the Jericho Cruise. So besides talking Royal Rumble on Tuesday, we're also going to be talking on the podcast a lot about the Jericho Cruise. And uh, they'll be giving us uh, their stories, their insight into who they met and, uh, you know, the fun they had and uh, what was going on and Dynamite itself. So can't wait to chat to uh, Heather and Chris on Tuesday's uh, Royal Rumble review show and find out to their experience um, in the flesh. So that should be quite fun. But uh, speaking of the War Rumble then, Rob, we're getting into our predictions now for the War Rumble uh, show. This is taking uh, place on Sunday night. Uh, now, I can't remember the name of the baseball stadium that it's taking place in. Um, it's in Houston, Texas. Uh, uh, but uh, do, you, do you remember the, the name of the stadium? Isn't it? It's going to be a big, big uh, stadium anyway. We know that. And uh, I know last... I should no, know this. Too. I, I, I've been trying to know it. It's on the tip of my tongue, but that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But the Royal Rumble, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is one of the most anticipated pay per views of the year and definitely my favourite gimmick match as well when it comes down to the Royal that's... Rumble matches itself. I must admit, uh, uh, of all rumbles from the last few years, have not been too memorable, not been too inspiring. With the exception of the women's Royal Rumbles, I, I have enjoyed the the, 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 90, uh, the 2018 one, which was won by Asuka, of course, and 2019, of course, won by the man, Becky Lynch, when uh, uh, she took, uh, she, she kind of... Uh, uh, shoehorned away into the match. I don't think she was meant to be in the match, but she she went in and she uh, won the match in the end by eliminating Charlotte at the very end. So, uh, and it officially takes us onto the road for WrestleMania as well. So we all get excited, looking forward to WrestleMania, how Royal Rumble is going to unfold, what potential matchups and feuds are going to come out of it that could potentially give us a glimpse into the card on April the 5th um, in Tampa Bay at WrestleMania 36. So let's have a look at some of the, the undercard matches then, Rob. Um, let's have a look at the Fiends. Bray Wyatt going up against Daniel Bryan. So they've had their encounter before. I think it was uh, TLC when they were involved in a match together. And that, well, in fact, that was that was uh, Mr. Rogers Bray Wyatt, wasn't it? That was Funhouse Bray yeah. Wyatt, not not uh, The Fiends. Uh, but this time it, uh, we've seen The Fiends attack Daniel Bryan on uh, various episodes of SmackDown. Now, this time it is going to be The Fiend going up against... Daniel Bryan, and it's going to be a strap match. So this is a gimmick match that we don't typically That's see, right. uh, you know, in, in, in North American wrestling or, or uh, WWE. I think the only strap match I can remember happening was, a, a, I don't know if it was a WrestleMania or some sort of pay-per-view match between Savio Vega and Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, in the mid-90s. I, I don't know if you've seen that one, but that's going back 20-plus mm. 20, 20 years. Now, this one's quite intriguing because... The Fiend is still quite hot. I think that uh, the character of The Fiend uh, maybe is, you know, is as tepid a little bit, maybe is not as hot as it was, uh, say, six months ago. I think that his match with Seth Rollins at Hell in a Cell did a little bit of damage to the character and the persona of The Fiend. But, you know, there's still yes. a lot of interest there. I still think it's a bit too soon for The Fiend to lose the championship. I think if he's going to lose the championship, it could be uh, more likely at WrestleMania, to be honest with you. Uh, but that would potentially mean another loss for Daniel Bryan. Uh, which would be, you know, unfortunate. And uh, where would that lead? Leave Daniel Bryan going into WrestleMania, no championship. Uh, you know, will he will he have a feud going into WrestleMania? But uh, 
I, I, I've, I've got to say that the Fiend is going to retain in this one. I unfortunately think I think it's going to be a good match. I think it's going to be quite an intense match as well, Rob. To be honest with you, a strap match. It's a, it's a gimmick that we don't see too often. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how they interact with one another, how the match unfolds. I do think it's going to be quite intense. I do think it's going to be quite a hard match as well. Um, but I've got to say the Fiend on this one because I can't see him losing the title until WrestleMania. But what about yourself, buddy? I'll agree with you on this one. I don't see Daniel Bryan going back to another WrestleMania as champ after that. You know, he had the uh, recycled belt or whatever you want to call it, um, which is, in fact, I just saw he he has a shirt now that he put out, which is like all like recycled materials or something like <laughs> that. And a, a tree gets planted for every shirt. That's, so, so that's actually really cool. But I saw he had tweeted that earlier today. I digress. Uh, the thing with The Fiend is he fought him as, as we call him, the Mr. Rogers Bray Wyatt last time. So you kind of knew there was going to be another match. Uh, Kane has kind of worked himself into this equation one way or another. And uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Kane involved in either this or the Royal Rumble. I'm a big Kane guy, even though, you know, he's. Yeah. Not- is your, your, your podcast uh, entrance or your podcast uh, opening theme is, is Kane's uh, yes. music? Well, it certainly was for the last episode anyway, but uh, you are a big Kane fan. I know that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And a uh, quick shout. So this is uh, It Lives, It Breathes. It's a, it's a band here in yeah. the New, New England area, and they do covers. They have uh, Check them out, man. Like Just go to YouTube or Spotify. They have a WWE playlist, and it's they did an Attitude Era thing, and this was the um, Kane theme where it had the lyrics. I think uh, a band Finger Eleven had done it, uh, and it's, re- it's really, really cool. So I, they let me awesome. use their music. It's a really great way to start the show. But anyway, as, as far as The Fiend, I could talk about Kane all day. But as, <laughs> as, as far as The Fiend, uh, we, we said this a little bit on the show, like he's he's taken some criticism. I do feel with all due respect, I do feel that the characters cooled off quite a bit, as you yeah. said, especially after that hell in a cell question mark ending. Uh, I mean, the red light. I'm not I get it. Mm. I'm not a fan of. I think the character's brilliant. I think the way they brought him about was brilliant. I think every time there was a firefly fun ha- firefly funhouse episode, gonna- we all got very excited. But uh, now it's. Not that it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's lost its, I, I don't know what the word is, and uh, I know a lot of fans have been very critical of Bray Wyatt and the writing, apparently it had affected his mental health, he had, had tweeted about that, so I want to say mental health, very, very important, not trying to knock him or anything, or the creative process or anything like, um, just as far as the character, I will respectfully say it's cooled off a little bit, that doesn't mean it, it can't come back or surprise us or, you know, have some sort of resurgence. I'm not a fan of this. We call it the Cool Ranch Doritos loco, or the Cool Ranch no, Doritos me, belt. Me neither. Me neither. Um, you know, we're on SmackDown. It has <laughs> to be blue. And then you have the alternative belt. That is his mask, essentially, which is creepy. I, I'm just not a fan of it. Uh, the entrance is great. The music is great. The character is great. But I just don't – I'm not sure where they're going with it. I see this match kind of ending with them – him being strapped or them being strapped or whatever, you know, however they're going to do this match. And I see them one way or another, like both going under the ring or into a hole in the ring and the smoke comes out again. Or I, I see some sort of like undecided, indecisive finish or something like that. Another brilliant thing about the character, I will say though, is every time someone has a feud with him, that the character seemingly turns face or heel respectively. I think that's another brilliant thing about it. Um, I just need, like I said, it's cooled off. I need something more from the fiend right now. I do see him retaining and ultimately possibly taking the belt all the way to WrestleMania. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I, I like your your idea of it not having a conclusive uh, finale, not having a conclusive ending to the match, which which would kind of protect Daniel Bryan as well. I mentioned earlier that it'd be a shame to see Daniel Bryan lose again on another uh, you know featured match on a pay per view. None of us wants to see that. We're all big fans of Daniel Bryan here on uh, the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. So to have an an inconclusive or an unconclusive finish where, yeah, they both go under the ring or Kane appears or just ends in some sort of melee, possibly setting up a three-way for WrestleMania between Kane, Daniel Bryan, The Fiend. I wouldn't be against that, to be honest with you. That wouldn't be too bad. But I do see when all said and done, The Fiend retaining. So, uh, yes, um, let's have a look at... um, Oh, I don't want to spend too much time on this one, but uh, Baron Corbin, King Corbin versus Roman Reigns. Now, I think they've done all they can in this feud. I can understand they might want a blow off match. Uh, the Royal Rumble is a Falls Count Anyway match. So with the added stipulation, it will add a bit more interest and a bit more intrigue. And, you know, they can fight around the baseball stadium. That'd be pretty cool. 
you probably yeah. get some probably get some shenanigans from uh, Corbyn's cronies getting involved. But uh, um, uh, you know, could this potentially be the end of their feud? I hope so. I, I kind of like Baron Corbyn as as a heel, um, but I think this one's gone on way too long, as far as I'm concerned. So. Uh, um, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of torn. I, I, I do like the King Corbin character. Um, I, I, my, my gut instinct is telling me that Roman Reigns wins on this one. But what about yourself, Rob? This is this is a tough one. Again, they beat this feud to death. Like oh, even yeah. now, right now, I think SmackDown's going on. Like I could have told you this. I think they announced earlier today it's going to be the Usos and Reigns versus Baron and his cronies. Like I could have told you that was going to happen. Like it's yeah. just any incarnation of this feud. We've seen it. Uh, thankfully it'll come to an end hopefully on Sunday. I'm going to see Corbin getting this. We're going to have a lot of fun going all over the place. Hopefully I don't want a lot of time in the ring, uh, in this match because you have two big guys, kind of a slower pace. Um, you know, I like what each of them bring to the table as far as their skill set and their signature moves and all that. I see a big spot ending this. I'm going to go with Corbin winning this one, uh, to get the booze. The fans are real angry. And uh, I believe both guys are in the rumble. So I feel like you're going to have a, a kind of hindered Roman Reigns kind of, you know, walking his way down to the ring in the rumble, kind of beat up a little bit. But that may play into a little bit of a storyline later on in the night. I'm going to go Baron Corbin. Mm, actually. Interesting. I see where you go in there. And uh, we'll talk about that more in the men's Raw rumble prediction. But uh, very interesting. What about uh, Becky Lynch defended a Raw Women's Championship against Asuka? Now, this is a, a repeat of uh, what happened 12 months ago in the 2019 Raw Rumble uh, match. And uh, I don't think a championship was on the line then. If I'm maybe Asuka. No, Asuka was the was the SmackDown champion at the time, wasn't? And she retained with her Asuka lock, um, but I think she lost the championship to Charlotte just before WrestleMania, which uh, kind of built that three way, that classic three way match we had in the main event of WrestleMania. But I digress. Uh, and uh, Asuka won that match twelve months ago. Now. Roles are reversed because Beck is the champion going in, and uh, she's been the man now uh, for uh, for well over a year. Uh, but uh, she's gone out and, and said on camera that Asuka is, is the one that she's not been able to beat, and she wants to kind of uh, turn the tide and, and change uh, that story uh, on Sunday night. Um, I unfortunately think that uh, Asuka is losing and that Becky will win and kind of tick that box, so to speak. But um, yeah, I mean, it would be a shame to see Asuka lose but then she's still a tag team champion I would, I would firmly expect her to go into Wrestlemania with Kyrie Sane and defend their tag team championships which is good for them but I think Asuka's losing on Sunday night I think Becky's winning uh, what about yourself buddy I agree and really good point I forget what the title picture was uh, 12 months ago and as far as that match I do remember that match uh, that Royal Rumble was very easy to predict on our prediction show I said Becky's gonna have to lose that match in order to win the Royal Rumble, which is just exactly what happened. We saw a play out. Great Royal Rumble uh, for the women, as you had said earlier. Uh, Asuka did get Becky to tap, as you said. I believe she tapped in that match. Yeah. And uh, I believe that was the case. And I see Becky getting that defeat over Asuka right now. I don't see Asuka two belts happening right now. Like you said, I like the tag team thing going. If Asuka wins, I'd be cool with that too. But I see Becky holding this thing possibly all the way to WrestleMania uh, in possibly another WrestleMania main event uh, depends on what's going on with the Royal Rumble. We'll talk about that in yeah. a little bit, but Becky Lynch, uh, she's killing it right now. Uh, I wouldn't say she's lost a lot of steam or anything like that. She's doing her thing uh, after her backstage appearance. This is a whole nother conversation, but uh, her making that, um, that gender comment and as far as equality and, you know, not calling it the women's division. And then sure enough, we're, we're taking the word women's off of the respective titles. So we have two WWE titles, two NXT titles. I thought that was very interesting that Becky said that. And days later they're making moves. I, I took that very seriously as far as what Becky means to the company. And uh, I think she's going to hold on to that belt for a little bit longer. So uh, I think the man train keeps on rolling. Mm, agreed, agreed. Now I heard your Royal Rumble uh, uh, prediction show, your preview show with the Queen, and uh, the Queen was not not a big fan of of uh, uh, the way Chad Gable is being portrayed as a Shorty G. Uh, she really was not happy with the Shorty G name and, and the gimmick and the look and the way he's being handled. Um, but he's going up against Sheamus. Um, in a singles match, it was possibly a, a match that might be uh, relegated to the kickoff. Um, certainly, in my opinion, usually on Royal Rumble kickoffs, 
they normally have a couple of matches. That's possibly one match that might fall into the kickoff. I wouldn't mind if it did. Um, but uh, Sheamus, he's back after a long injury. Um, he's got the, the kind of the, the spiked up hair again, going back to yeah. circa 2011 Sheamus. So the, the Mohawk, which I preferred, has long gone now. Uh, going up against uh, Shorty G, Chad Gable, uh, finalist in the, the King of the Ring 2019. Um, now, it's great that, that Chad Gable, Shorty G, is being featured in a in a Royal Rumble match, a pay-per-view match, which, which is good for him. Um, but I can only see one kind of outcome to this match, to be honest with you. And I think, you know, the return in Sheamus has to win. Um, but uh, what's your thoughts uh, on, on everything I've said there? Well, I think first and foremost, most importantly, having had a Mohawk, I get it. You know, sometimes you're going out <laughs> somewhere nice and you got to, you can't really like make it look all snazzy. So, you know, having a Mohawk's fun, but like, you know, every once in a while, you know, you just, Kind of get tired of having a mohawk, you know. What I'm I sure mean? it's hard so, work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of hairspray, a lot of moose. <laughs> exactly, yeah, man. And uh, so, no, I'm, I'm just joking. But obviously, <laughs> um, you know, Shame, it's crazy how much Seamus just transformed himself back to, like you said, 2011 Seamus. He, he looks fantastic. He's great. We all thought he was hurt. Glad to see him back in the ring. I would imagine that he beats. I, I have to say, Chad Gable. It hurts me to say, oh, Shorty. Yeah. <laughs> just be not not because it's not because it's just like saying they might as well call him underdog. You know what I mean? Like it's so on the nose. It's like, oh, you're short, and now we're gonna call you short, and you wear basketball jersey and basketball shorts that literally say Shorty G, and it's just it's. Not that it's on the nose. It's just like it's just like telling us what to think. And the guy is a fantastic wrestler, uh, king of the ring, runner up. Uh, I just I don't like what they're doing. It's I feel like someone's doing this as a joke to him and is laughing at him. And he's owning it. You know, he's he's taking his lumps or whatever. But I just I don't dig it. I see Sheamus obviously getting this one and probably a pre-show match. I'm surprised this is a Royal Rumble um card match and uh at the same time i could see him roll up sheamus and go the other way but i'm gonna go sheamus on this one yeah it'd be very interesting and i think it will kind of make clear to everybody what wwe's intentions are with uh, chad gable shorty g on sunday if he wins then maybe he's in for a bit of a push and uh you know that could be good for him if he loses then uh you know i don't think we'll see many more pay-per-view matches for chad gable in the future but uh i'm looking forward to the match i, I like both wrestlers um but uh yeah, yeah get rid of get rid of the shorty g gimmick and outfit just give him back his name. Give him back his identity, please. That's all we want as wrestling fans. Um, let's have a look at uh, one more match. So Bailey defended a, uh, a SmackDown Women's Championship or a SmackDown Championship against Lacey Evans. So roles have reversed over the last few months. Bailey has turned heel. Uh, she's now uh, kind of soccer mum Bailey uh, going up against Lacey Evans, who's gone from being a dastardly heel to now a lovable baby face. And I think that the baby face uh, turn for Lacey Evans is working far better than Bailey's heel turn um, is. And I uh, don't think uh, she was quite clicking as a baby face to, on the main roster. And she's not quite clicking as a heel either. Um, but this should be an interesting match. Uh, now, a lot of people are kind of divided as to whether Lacey will win the championship on Sunday or whether they're potentially holding off for a, a bigger occasion and maybe giving her the bounce at WrestleMania. Um, I'd like to see Lacey win, but I think it's possibly a bit too soon for her. Maybe they keep the championship on, on Bailey a little bit longer. There could be some involvement or maybe an inclusion of Sasha heading into uh, WrestleMania. But uh, there's lots of ways this match could go and the storyline could go getting closer to April the 5th. But how do you think Sunday night's going to end for Bailey against Lacey Evans? That's a, that's a great question. And that is the question. Is now Lacey Evans' time or is it going to be a little bit down the road? We had obviously discussed this on, on our show, yeah. uh, not to regurgitate Kate too uh not to regurgitate too much of what we've done like we said bailey with the heel turn uh with the can can i talk to the manager haircut as we always say <laughs> um i yeah it, it kind of fell flat like obviously you have the shock of the initial turn uh which they had almost pulled the trigger on a couple times it was very very confusing finally they did turn bailey and then nothing you know it's just like kind of bland I, i'm not feeling it one person who who does kind of have a lot of steam behind her right now is Lacey Evans who I've been saying forever since like uh, NXT uh knee she was actually a face of her a little bit in NXT but when you turned her into a heel which she did a good job with uh you know former military super mom uh really I, I think she's great persona and uh, her in-ring works pretty pretty darn good uh the crowd's behind her they're involving her daughter in the storyline there's this very cute Twitter video of her, her daughter, and Elias singing. Um, 
it's it's adorable. I love it. I feel like very few people have a lot of steam behind them right now, uh, which makes it very hard to pick Royal Rumble winners. I think Lacey Evans, her time is now. I think the crowd's behind her. I'm a big fan. Turning her face is the absolutely right call. Uh, I would love to see her win it on Sunday. I don't think she's going to win it this time around. And she's had her fair, oh, she's had her fair share of title matches fairly early in her yeah, main roster. I hate, I hate saying main roster, but in her career. And uh, like uh, like we had said on our show, maybe maybe wait till the WrestleMania. Maybe wait a couple more pay-per-views. Have the daughter come in the ring. Have that emotional moment, which you have to do. And if it's on Sunday, I'll be very, very happy. Uh, she deserves the title as far as I'm concerned. And I want to see that moment. I'll say Bailey retains this time around, though. And if I'm wrong, I'll be very happy about it. Yeah, I, th- I think you're. I think you're spot on there. And I think they're going to wait for that big visual at WrestleMania of of the daughter getting in the ring and, and Lacey holding the championship. But uh, um, like I say, if it happens on Sunday, then then fine. Um, but uh, well, you know, Sasha Banks, uh, she's not been involved too much recently. There, there's a, a chance that she might be involved in in the SmackDown Women's Championship, getting closer to WrestleMania. Um, so that'd be interesting to see how that all plays out. Most definitely. But let's have a look at the women's Raw Rumble match then Rob so um, checking kind of the, the latest information there's only been five women that have been formally announced or certainly uh, as of this morning uh, five women that have been formally announced for the women's Royal Rumble they are Sarah, uh, yes I've got five Sarah Logan Charlotte Flair Alexa Bliss Nikki Cross and Natalia uh, being the most recent uh, person to include herself via Instagram so uh, not many not many women kind of uh, are formally announced I mean it, it, this is a bit of a, a weird build for the women's match um what, what sort of you know what are you taking from this i mean is it is it just lack of planning or are they just going to give us lots of surprises and lots of kind of you know sort of surprise appearances nxt call-ups uh what, what do you think is behind only announcing four or five uh, women uh, ahead of sunday night then rob i'm i'm actually not okay with this i think just uh you know we talk about equality and uh we you know we were talking about like gender and stuff like that you know it's great we have the women's royal rumble and all that but we have 22 i think possibly up to 24 25 announced for the men at this point and you have as of what monday night four now friday night two days before the rumble (laughs) five like give me 11 give me 11 five uh you know i know there were rumors you know for each Rumble, 10 NXT, 10 Raw, 10 SmackDown, which would have been very cool. At the same time, that limits your kind of legends and surprises. The positive in this is, you know, the possibilities are endless. Legends, NXT, I think we're going to see a lot of NXT, a lot of NXT UK. Heck, Shayna Baszler might be a favorite for me in this one. I Like I was saying, kind of hinting at earlier, but five women, I mean, that is... You know, remember we used to have Royal Rumble qualifying matches, and, you know, we're having the guys declare, hey, I'm going to be in the Royal Rumble. We haven't really had too much of this. You know, Natalia did it on, like, The Bump, that show, a couple days ago. Yeah. We're seeing things kind of trickle in on Twitter. But five women, I'm not okay with that. I, I really think it, it takes away from the Women's Rumble. That being said, I think the Women's Rumble this year will be better than uh, not to, you know, pit them against each other. I think the Women's Royal Rumble is going to be fantastic this year. I think there's going to be a ton of surprises, and that's the positive. But we're coming into Friday, and maybe they're doing something on SmackDown right now as we speak. But five women i'm i'm not cool with that yeah well maybe maybe they are doing something on on smackdown and uh, you you should be watching it instead of speaking to me but i'm glad that you're talking to me instead but uh way better you, you're going to have all the usual names, aren't you, that's going to be on it. You're going to have all the usual names from Raw and SmackDown. You're possibly going to have, uh, you know, as you said, some uh, some women come up from the NXT. I mean, you know, possible NXT entrance. You mentioned Shayna Baszler. Now, according to the UK bookies, bookmakers in the UK, they've got Shayna Baszler as, as the uh, as the favourite to win the Raw Rumble on Sunday night. Wow. So that, that's quite interesting. Uh, Rhea Ripley will almost certainly be a part of it. Possibly Bianca Belair, maybe Candice LeRae, Io Shirai, Tony Storm, NXT. NXT UK Women's Champion Kaylee Ray could be a part of it. So I'm expecting the same as you, a lot of NXT and NXT UK call-ups for Sunday night to, to kind of fill out uh, the uh, the Rumble because um, starting out from five, God, they, they need the help really to, to put uh, 30 women in there. But um, what about some surprises? I mean, there's been a, a lot of uh, rumours on uh, on the internet about uh, Naomi now being fit, and Naomi could be an entrant. Uh, and dare I say it, could we see the return of Nia Jax as well? Uh, what What are your thoughts on, on that? And I'm going to throw you another name, Rob, Ronda Rousey. 
Ronda Rousey, could she could she be a surprise in the Rumble this year? Yeah, you you hit it all on the head, man. Uh, I'm a huge Naomi fan, very much expecting to see Naomi. No question in my mind. Uh, she's had a lot of big WrestleMania wins, whether it be for the title, whether it be for Battle Royals. Uh, so very excited to see Naomi return. I really think that's going to happen. Very much want to see Baszler, and that's interesting to me. She's she's the number one pick. That's great. I would love to see that. Uh, Ronda Rousey, I am not huge on uh, for both in and out of the ring reasons. Uh, I do not want to see her return in this particular spot. Uh, a lot of people are saying she's a favorite to come back and win it all. I do not want to see uh, Ronda Rousey. That's just me personally. Um, who else we got? We can talk about this Logan. Who else? Maybe some legends. I would love to see Victoria. She hasn't gotten a lot of love from them in a long time. Uh, we've seen Trish and lead it. Well, Trish pretty much hung it up. A while ago, uh, Io Shirai, like you had mentioned, I would love, love, yeah. love to see Rhea, Kaylee Ray, uh, heck, Shotzi. I would love to see Shotzi. That would be there. cool. That would be very cool to see Shotzi in there. That would be a really big uh, shot in the arm for her as well, having just made her NXT debut and then getting her on a Royal Rumble. But uh, like you say, it's going to be full of surprise. I think that's the match to watch. If you want surprises um, and uh, possibly a few legends and a few returns as well, uh, you're not you're not a you're not a big fan of Ronda Rousey. I'm kind of gauging uh, through through Skype here, then Rob. I mean, uh, you know, I I like Ronda. I think she adds a, a sense of realism, reality, and okay. legitimacy to the WWE. And um, I really enjoyed kind of the the feud she had with with Becky, and then with Becky and Charlotte leading up to WrestleMania. But, um, yeah, uh, like I say, it'd be interesting to see what happens Sunday. I, I, a lot of people are saying that she's she's kind of out of the wrestling game now, that she doesn't want to return. She's interested mm. in, in kind of starting a family, which she made very clear. If, if ever you watch uh, uh, Total Divas, right. which, which I do. She's she, 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a closet Total Divas fan, uh, but uh, you know she's made it very clear that she wanted to start a family. Now, of course, these episodes, season nine, were recorded a while ago, so she might have uh, changed her name. And uh, of course, you know Vince McMahon, he just needs to make that phone call and say, "Ronda, we want you back." But uh, I'm expecting Ronda to be at WrestleMania, so maybe the Royal Rumble is when we see her return. So it's going to be very interesting. But the sixty-four thousand dollar question, then, Rob, um, who who's your pick for the women's Royal Rumble? Who who do you think is going to be the last woman standing? So I got my list here. I'll do you one better. Um, I saw on some of the questions someone was asking uh, final four, so I'll give a final. Oh four. yeah. That so cool? that that was uh, everything pro wrestling, wasn't it? Uh, no, sorry, that was uh, that was Mags, I believe. Uh, but. Um, hey from uh yeah motivated and confident mags from uh, uh badlands podcast so uh oh. hey mags uh, shout out to you um but a really good podcast we've had him on the on the show before so yeah i'll be mean, final four then go for it who who have you got for your final four i'm gonna go uh charlotte flair i'm gonna go Shayna baszler i am going to go sasha banks mm. and possibly man, i don't want to see it I think if Rhonda comes back, I'll go Rhonda. If not, I'll go Alexa Bliss, maybe. Interesting. But, uh, Interesting. Yeah, definitely Baszler, Flair, and Sasha, I would say for sure. Yeah. My, my final four is very similar to you. My, my, my final four would be um, Charlotte Flair, Shayna Baszler. I'd go with Sasha, but I'm going to throw a different name in there. I think Rhea Ripley, considering the hot run she's oh. had, could could be could be in that final four as well. And uh, I'm not expecting her to win. I mean, my, my winner out of the four, um, I'm going to go with the predictable uh, choice. And I'm going to say Charlotte Flair. She's not won a Royal Rumble before. I think she is um, headed into some championship match or another at uh, WrestleMania, whether it be for the Raw or the SmackDown uh, championship. Of course, she's on SmackDown at the moment. But if you win the Rumble, you get your pick, don't you? So, um, but uh, that's my final floor. And that's my uh, my pick as well. Charlotte Flair might be a bit, bit, bit of a boring prediction. Um, but I think that because she's not won it before, I think they're going to give it to her this time around. Uh, I, I'm, I'm with you, man. And I like your final four better than I like mine, uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I will go Charlotte Flair. I, I think, you know, we were talking about this earlier. It's, uh, I just, I, I can't put my finger on, you know, hopefully there's some surprises here, but it seems like Charlotte's been on the back burner for a while. Doesn't have that Royal rumble win on her resume. It's going to happen one, one way or another. Uh, I, I see Charlotte Flair getting it and 
possibly have those best friends, better enemies battle between uh, Becky and Charlotte, kind of that Austin Rock comparison right there. Could be, could be. Uh, right, finally, let's have a look at the men's Royal Rumble. So a bit more to talk about here because, you know, more of the uh, the, the uh, competitors, more of the entrants. So uh, according to my list, there's 25 out of the 30 already confirmed. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the names, but uh, one, one of the big talking points before anybody was uh, was announced was Brock Lesnar, of course. Not only announcing himself into the Royal Rumble, but uh, uh, announcing himself or Paul Heyman announced on his behalf that he was going to be going into the Royal Rumble as the number one the very first entrance so that kind of set a lot of tongues wagging and a lot of minds racing about uh, the possible scenarios that could be facing us at the Royal Rumble this coming Sunday and uh, who might come in to you know have uh, interaction with Brock Lesnar throughout the Royal Rumble uh, who might come out number two who might come out number 30 will Brock still be standing at 30 but uh, uh, what are your thoughts on Brock Lesnar's involvement coming out number one and some of the potential dream match scenarios we could see on Sunday um, who would you like to see kind of come out and uh, have a face-to-face a nose-to-nose with Brock Lesnar on Sunday uh, I, I like the way you put it because I thought you were going to ask what did I think about just Brock being there, number one. But I like that you you put a very positive spin on it, like these dream match scenarios. Yeah. A lot. Let's face it, a lot of these guys are going to get tossed right out. I think the way it goes, number two comes in, tossed out. Number three comes in, tossed out. Number four until you get a couple consecutive, uh, top card guys that are kind of able to hang in there, and then the ring kind of starts to fill up a little bit around 10 but those as far as those dream matches that you're talking about and I, I like the way you look at it it's very positive you got to talk about bro matt riddle <laughs> yeah yeah him definitely because he talks about facing lesnar get him in the ring with him you know maybe he can hang with him for a while uh we've seen styles brock before i'm just looking at this list here uh, Ray Ray and Brock, what a great moment that was. The crowd was oh, really yeah. Bummed. It'd be good to revisit that for sure. And and of course, Ricochet, he had a bit of a uh, oh, a bit yes. of a, 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 a an episode, a bit of a confrontation with Brock on Monday night. And uh, maybe Ricochet is looking to get a bit of comeuppance against Brock on Sunday now. Not that, that he'll eliminate him, but uh, that could be quite interesting to see Ricochet. Now that he knows uh, what what uh, what's in store with Brock, maybe he can put up a bit more of a fight on Sunday. But that that's something. Uh, a a lot of people are saying Drew McIntyre could put up a good fight against Brock, but uh, is Drew one of your favorites? Are you looking forward to seeing Drew on Sunday? Uh, so definitely Final Four, and I do like what, real quick, I do like what you're saying about Ricochet. Uh, yeah. I think harping on that raw moment, you got a great point. I think there's going to be a moment between Ricochet and Brock, possibly an elimination, <laughs> maybe not, but there's going to be something there where he, he gets a couple offensive moves on Brock. I do like that. Um, real quick, I also just wanted to say, Alistair Black uh, versus Brock, another heavy fit. I mean, love this guy NXT, loved him tagging with Ricochet after NXT. Kind of confused on how they've been using him. He's been on the back burner until this recent feud with Buddy Murphy, which was great. This guy could be the next, I mean, I don't want to say Undertaker, but this guy could be the next big thing if they do it right. Uh, huge fan, great theme music. And uh, going back to Drew McIntyre, definitely in my final four, heavy favorite. Uh, I do not see him winning the Rumble because, and no offense, I don't see him being in the main event at WrestleMania. That being said, a lot of rumors going back to him taking on The Undertaker at WrestleMania going back months and months ago. I, I see them going more that direction. I see him in Final Four, but I don't see Drew McIntyre winning this thing. Mm, interesting, interesting. So... As we did with the, with the women's prediction, uh, let's have a look at some some possibilities that might come through from the NXT brand. Then, so you mentioned uh, Matt Riddle, potentially current NXT champion Adam Cole. Now, I think he was in last year's Rumble, so he'd be another good entrant. Uh, Walter, possibly the NXT UK champion. Uh, Dominic Dijakovic, another big, intimidating, very athletic uh, guy. That that would be good to see him in the Rumble to see what he could offer. Um, I'm going to throw out a name though, and uh, he's hot on everybody's lips at the moment. Keith Lee. So yeah. uh, Keith Lee, if he was in the Rumble, now I think a lot of people are, are, are expecting Keith to be in the Rumble. Uh, I'd love to see him in the Rumble and what damage he could have and potentially that face-off with Brock and many other Raw and SmackDown superstars to really cement his push. Like I say, we saw the start of his push at the Survivor Series that uh, uh, he got eliminated by Roman Reigns, but that that handshake and that uh, kind of uh, yeah, kind of thumbs up from Bro- from Roman, but uh, Keith Lee uh, could could he potentially feature heavily on Sunday night? As you're explaining that, I just had a, uh, 
not to toot my own horn here, but I just had a brilliant idea as you were explaining it. Go on, go. Keith Lee, Keith Lee I, I would say 99.9% is going, nice cup, by the way, is mm. going to be in the Rumble. You know that big uh, that <laughs> bump, bump move he, he that bump move he did on Adam Cole where he threw him into the crowd. Yeah, I uh, he he almost did it to Roddy. Roddy Strong. Roddy got kind of caught on the ropes. Say he hits that on Kofi. Kofi goes flying into Ooh. the audience, the rail. You know, people catch him in the audience, and that's Kofi's big comeback <laughs> into the. You know, that's Kofi. You know, just see him doing that bump on Kofi or someone else. So I definitely see Keith Lee coming in. I don't see him winning the thing, but definitely hitting that big. What do they call it? The pounce or whatever that he yeah, does. Yeah, he's gonna knock a couple people out that way. He's gonna throw some people around. Keith Lee versus Brock. Talking about your dream scenarios, that would be another good one. Uh, I'm going to throw another name at you, not necessarily NXT. And I would love to see Gargano in there, of course. Uh, he was in last year. I think he's on the watch-along, which makes me think that he's not going to be in it. But uh, you never know. Uh, the guys switch out on, on the watch-alongs. Have you ever watched those? How about Booker T? Houston. He's ready to go. He's in oh, ring yeah. shape. He's been wanting to to be in the Rumble. He's talked about it on WWE Backstage. Huge pop from the crowd. Again, we have 25 spots filled, so that leaves five NXT spots or surprise or whatever you want to call it. But, man, I like that Keith Lee idea, and I'm, I'm thinking about what Kofi's going to do, and, and that, that, that pounce might be it, man. Yeah, I like your idea of having uh, Booker T in there. He's hometown. He he looks awesome. Some of the the pictures that you've been taking him of himself training, he looks ripped. Um, and uh, yeah, it'd be great to see him. He could be the uh, kind of the the special appearance from a veteran. I mean, other veterans. Uh, let me throw out some names. Possibly Kane. We've seen a bit more of him recently. Uh, Goldberg. You know, it'd be great to see Goldberg back in the ring. Maybe him have a bit of a face off with Brock just to bring back memories of their great feud from a couple of years ago. Booker T. You mentioned him. Um, how about Edge? Now, Edge has been hinting on social media uh, that he's packing, getting ready to uh, head over to Houston. Uh, is he going to be there in the Rumble? Now, he's, he's been uh, out of action for nine years now since WrestleMania 2011 which was his last match against Del Rio. And, uh, you know, he had a, a career threatening in injury. He was told to retire. But a lot of people are saying that he's, he, he signed a contract that could involve in-ring action. Um, well, uh, would you like to see Edge on the uh, in the Royal Rumble on Sunday? Uh, I was a big... The answer is, would I like to? I was a big, big Edge fan, especially when he was teaming with Mysterio, and he yeah. was great. The whole thing that went down with him and Matt Hardy and Lita, uh, I lost a lot of respect for that whole scenario, just on a personal level, uh, you know, outside of the, the storylines and the in-ring work and stuff like that. You know, I'm glad he's healthy, hypothetically. Um, I don't know if I necessarily want him to come back. Uh, it's always good to see a guy come back from injury. I think... He, he had posted something very recently about, like, you know, people said they saw me in Pittsburgh and they said they saw me sign this or whatever. He's been getting ready for something. There's no question. Um, I don't know what he signed or what he hasn't signed or where he's been or at the Performance Center or anything like that. It seems to me like Edge is going to pop in uh, for a heck of a pop. Uh, it seems that way. I hope there – whatever – Whatever injury he has, I hope he comes in. And heck, honestly, I'd like to see Paige. Pop. I mean, obviously, depending on her injury, she had surgery. You know, I'm pretty sure she's done. I know it was, you know, she could have been paralyzed. But if there is a way for Paige to come back, I would much rather see that. What a, what a moment that would be. I think that would be a lot more impactful uh, just because she's so young in, in her career and talented in so many ways. You just had the movie about her. So Edge, I'm kind of, it would be a great moment. But for me personally, I I don't need to see him back. Uh, no offense or anything like that. I, I'd rather see somebody else. Uh, I would love to see like a healthy Jeff Hardy. You know, I know he has his demons and no matter what, um, you know, with substance abuse or any other things, I would love to see him just clean up his act more than one way and, you know, see that juke and, you know, hear the Hardy music. That for me <laughs> would be, that would be nice. Uh, what do you think? I'll throw it back to you. Any thoughts on punk? Well, I was gonna, I was gonna uh, mention the, the the name CM Punk, and uh, I don't think he's gonna be in the Rumble. I think uh, having watched WWE backstage uh, from this week uh, when he was on there, um, I, I think he he's kind of quite happy doing the presenting thing. Um, I don't think he's got any desire to step in, back into the ring anytime soon. As much as I would love it, um, you know, just looking at his, it's kind of you know, just the, he doesn't look like he's in any kind of ring shape at the moment. To be honest with you, I would, 
I, I don't know. I don't think he's ready. Um, so uh, maybe he's happy doing what he's doing, but it's something that we could see in the next couple of years. I don't think it's going to happen this time around, though. But uh, I'll, I'll, you, you nearly caught me out there because I'm going to throw you some names now. Okay. And I, I want you to give me either a, a hell yeah or a hell no, uh, based on whether you want the want, want to see these individuals in the World Rumble this year. So either a hell yeah or a hell no to the following names. So like the first it. name, Cain Velasquez. I'm going to go hell no. Hell no. Okay, what about uh, Tyson Fury? I'm going to go hell no, just like uh, I'd rather see like my wrestlers. You know what I mean? Like nothing yeah. against them. Just for me personally, hell, hell no. Okay, and uh, John Cena. Could oh, we see? Oh, could yeah. we see John Cena make it? Hell yeah! Uh, <laughs> but uh, that would be good. That would be good. It would get a bit of a reaction from the crowd. Uh, but uh, there we go. Now, um, give us give us your final four and give us your your winner, your predicted winner for the men's rumble. Then, uh, uh, who who have you got in your final four? Based on everything we've spoken about, who do you think is going to be there um, in the final four? All right, you got it. I like that rapid fire, man. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> for final four, I'll go Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. I'm gonna go AJ Styles, and I am going to. Go, I was gonna go KO. I'm gonna go Braun Strowman. So Reigns, Styles, McIntyre, Braun, and a uh, winner. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it has to be. It has to be Roman Reigns. I feel like again, I would love to see a surprise. I like it when the underdogs win. I would love to see a Ricochet or a Gargano or something like that. Well, an Alistair Black win. That's that for me would be emotional and great. I feel like it's going to be Reigns. Glad he's healthy. Glad he's back. And I'll be happy if he wins. But I see that Reigns. They've kept him so far away from the Fiend. They've kept him so far away from the title picture. This Corbin yeah. thing has been going on and on and on. He's going to be all beat up from the last man standing. He's going to come in, and I think he's going to pull out the or be literally the last man standing in the ring. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Well, I'll give you my final four then. And I've got uh, Randy Orton. I think he's had a really good run lately, a good push. Um, I think he's had a really good showing of himself. So Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, uh, Roman Reigns, and Keith Lee, I think, could be in the final oh. four. So I, I'm, I'm half expecting, the way I see it, maybe Cain Velasquez coming into the Rumble to el eliminate Brock, maybe setting up a WrestleMania match between those two. And the final four, Orton, McIntyre, Keith Lee, Roman Reigns. And I've got to agree with you I, I i think that roman reigns could win it and i think that wwe have put a lot of hard work into protecting roman reigns uh and uh minimizing the booze by keeping him away from the title picture which has helped him to be honest with you um as much as we're sick and tired of seeing him fight baron corbin i think it has helped um you know it, it, the general perception of roman reigns instead of him being shoved down our throats which he was for so many years has kind of kept him on the on the back burner but now i think he's where wwe and vince man are going to reheat uh roman reigns they're going to give him the win on sunday and uh, build him towards the championship match possibly against the fiend at wrestlemania so i agree with you there but uh, yeah, very interesting, and we'll have to see what goes down on Sunday night. So, uh, Rob, that's pretty much all of our uh, Royal Rumble predictions. Uh, it, it's, it's been a, a lot of fun going through it and fantasy yeah. booking and kind of imagining what might happen. And it's very intriguing having the addition of Brock Lesnar in there at number one and all the people. Like say, could he could he have a face off with uh, Matt Riddle? Could we have Matt Riddle have a bit of a stare down with with Goldberg? Now that would be great, considering yes. uh, well, you know you know the, the bro uh, not being too complimentary of Goldberg's wrestling style and the match he had against the Undertaker. Uh, the Undertaker could be another addition into the Rumble. You never know. Uh, you know, this is the time of year when we tend to see the uh, Undertaker resurface, uh, getting ready for WrestleMania, of course. So it's it is fun. We're so hyped and so looking forward to, and we've got such good uh, high expectations for the Royal Rumble. I hope that our uh, hopes and expectations aren't dashed on the night. I hope that it's not a, a, a letdown, but I'm sure it won't be. I'm sure it won't be. It's a stacked card and a really stacked uh, Royal Rumble, but. Um, with the exception of the women's match, we don't really know what's going on there. I'm sure there'll be, there'll be plenty of surprises for the women's match. But uh, yeah, um, well, uh, just final thought on the Royal Rumble out of the, the undercard and the, and the matches. Kind of what you're most looking forward to going into Sunday night. Well, I'll say this: we ended our podcast, and you know, we were picking the winners for the Royal Rumbles, and I was feeling a little bummed. I was like, yeah, like Charlotte Flair makes sense, and Roman Reigns makes sense, but. You got me a little bit more hyped after this one, man. I'm liking like a lot of the theories <laughs> are coming up with. 
uh, you know, Goldberg coming versus Riddle. Um, the whole thing with Brock, you know, being the WWE champion, and it's not like he's defending the belt. I don't think they really clearly said anything, but he's just going to throw 29 other men over the top rope. That'll be interesting to see what happens, but you definitely have me more hyped than I was on my own <laughs> podcast, man. I'm more excited, man. I like, uh, I like what you brought to the table, man, and I think the undercard should be okay. Oscar Becky's going to be great. The last man standing, I don't know. Uh, Shorty G, Sheamus, all that kind of stuff, I'm not sure about. I think the women's Rumble match, I have a feeling, is going to be really good with a ton of surprises. I think the men's Rumble match is going to be good as well. But I think the women's Rumble match is going to steal the show. And you got me a little bit more excited, man. Yeah, I, I, things I'm looking forward to the most, and I've got to focus mostly on um, on the on the Raw Rumble match itself, uh, matches itself. I mean, I am looking forward to I'm quite intrigued by the theme versus Daniel Bryan. I'm interested to see how that plays out. Uh, really hoping they don't uh, repeat the red light. That really is quite a distraction yeah. uh, for the wrestlers and the fans. Um, but uh, as far as the men's Rumble is concerned, looking forward to potentially seeing Keith Lee in there and what damage he could do. Um, you know, are we going to see, uh, you know, Matt Riddle and could we potentially see a face off between him and Brock and him and Goldberg? There's so many things that could get down on Sunday night. It's all fantasy booking, pie in the sky theory thinking at the moment, but uh, we're only a couple of days away. So I really can't wait to see what actually happens. And if any of our theories or fantasy booking dream matches do actually come true. But uh, Rob, I want to thank you so much for coming on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast uh, this week for the special predictions episode. We, we covered NXT, AEW Dynamite, uh, Worlds Collide and War Rumble. So we covered a lot all in about an hour and 45. So a little bit more than we were uh, hoping to go. But it was a really good episode of Wrestling with Jonas. Uh, before we uh, say goodbye to you properly, do you have any, any plugs, any any final uh, kind of Twitter handle, social media or podcasting plugs that you want to throw out there? So that my fans uh, and, and followers can uh, find out and uh, say hi and, and, and get to know you a bit better and uh, listen to more of your podcast and all of your content. Absolutely, man. Shameless plugs. First, uh, John, I got to thank you for having me. And it was, uh, it was just an incredible honor when I, I read a message from you and I'm like, oh, you want me to come on your show, man? That, that meant a lot to me. The fact that you listened to the show was great. Uh, I've been listening to your show. Uh, you and you guys or your guys are fantastic. Uh, I love just like the way you you kind of pick each match apart for the pay per views. It's great. Your website is fantastic. Not oh, only just the pod the podcast episodes, but just like uh, the news and the reviews and everything. So make sure you follow, of course, Wrestling with Johners, one of my personal favorites. Shameless plug. And thank you. Uh, you know, please, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, man. It's been really fun. I'm glad we went over. This was a lot of fun. Uh, on Twitter, follow me at Bob Culture Pod. We just have such a great community. I have great people on my show. Uh, I have great people that I work with, like John, like the Queen, uh, Bill Bodkin, Michael Vacchiano, Matt Wittes, Nooner, Chris Nunez, hashtag wrestlers love Chris Nunez, the whole gang. It's great. Um, it's really just a great community. Uh, the Bob Culture Podcast on all platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. Instagram, uh, follow us, uh, get involved, get in the conversation. And yeah, it's just a great positive community. And uh, John, thank you so much, man. We got to do it again. An open invite to come on our show for sure. Oh, definitely. I'll take you up on that. But thank you so much. And uh, I mean, the next two episodes that I have dropping very, very soon, we're going to be doing a Worlds Collide recap review episode. Or I've got Owen from uh, Wrestle News 365 joining me on that episode. We'll be dropping sometime Sunday afternoon. Um, and then Tuesday, as I mentioned, uh, myself and uh, Heather and Chris, uh, fresh off the Jericho cruise, will be joining me on the War Rumble review recap. Uh, we'll be talking in, uh, all the good things, uh, the undercard and the Royal Rumble matches, and that will be dropping on Tuesday. So please don't miss them two uh, very, very good episodes. I'm sure they will be. Don't forget to visit uh, our website, as Rob mentioned there, wrestlingwithjohners.com, where you've got uh, all of our news articles, uh, links to our merch, and links to all of our podcasts and interviews, and so much more. So please keep it tuned to the Wrestling With Jonas podcast for all of your weekly NXT and AEW updates, occasional uh, uh, WWE and AEW pay-per-view reviews, interviews, uh, and exclusive articles, and so much more. And if you have enjoyed listening to this podcast, please don't forget to spread the word, tell your friends, and tell your family. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you can be notified every time a new episode drops Rob thank you very much once again for coming on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast we'll hopefully catch up with you all again soon and to all of my listeners have a great weekend enjoy Worlds Collide enjoy the Royal Rumble have a great weekend and speak to you all again soon bye